Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto helps Hinata to awaken an advanced version of Byakugan part 1 before I start please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well, let's start the video. This isn't Shinigami's stomach. These were the first thoughts of Konoha's legendary yellow flash, Minato Namika's, as he regained consciousness. The last thing he remembered was telling Harazin to make sure Naruto was seen as a hero, and now he is. Where am I? His eyelids were currently closed, so he slowly opened them, shocked at the amount of effort he had to use to do such a minuscule task. The first thing he saw was a concrete wall, with some lights illuminating the room. He heard some noises, so he turned to where he thought the noise was coming from. He saw that they were a few medical machines, indicating, from what he could tell, blood pressure, heartbeat, and things like that. He saw something that looked like an IV drip and realized it was connected to him. What the hell is going on? He began to look down at himself and realized he was wearing a hospital gown. He could tell he was almost skin and bones beneath that gown. He also realized that he had almost no energy in him as he could barely muster the energy to move his hand. He wriggled a few of his fingers and lifted it a few inches, but that wasn't much. He began to try and speak. Hello. His voice was still there, but it was a mere hoarse whisper than the commanding tone he was used to using. Trying his best, he spoke again. Hello. It wasn't much louder, and nobody was coming. Determining that he would stay alone until somebody came to check on him, his mind wandered to the important question. How am I alive? His mind raced through the events of the Kaiubi attack and sealing. The masked Chiha attacking, threatening his son, controlling the Kaiubi, before he managed to defeat him. He had escaped, but he knew he would be back. Part of the reason why he sealed the Kaiubi into Naruto was that he would need all the help to beat that masked Chiha. And he was not sure that his body would have been able to handle the full Kaiubi being sealed into him and going with him to Shinigami's stomach. On that note, is that portion of the Kaiubi still with me? He wished he could move and check the seal, but that was impossible at the moment. His mind continued on the thought of the fate of the Kaiubi or the half sealed in his son. Minato's contemplative demeanor brightened immensely as he thought about it. He was alive. He could raise his son. He could be there for him. A smile formed over his lips as he thought about it. He suddenly heard a new sound, breaking the sounds of the medical machines. He noticed the door finally and saw the handle was moving. The door opened, and instead of some kind of nurse, he was surprised to see two boys and a girl sneak into the room. Deciding to figure out what was going on, he closed his eyes, pretended to still be asleep. See Kiba? I told you. It's the Yandame Hokage. He's still alive. But how? How is he alive? He was supposed to have died with the Kaiubi 11 years ago. Minato nearly cried out loud, but kept his composure. Eleven years. It had been eleven years. How was that even possible? He must have been in a very deep coma and finally have awoken. He knew little about medicine, but knew someone with the ability to think and have motor control after that long should be impossible. Then he remembered the state he was in physically. The nurses must have made sure to heal his mind so it never deteriorated. I don't know. I just know, here he is. How the heck did you find him again, Naruto? Naruto. 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 My son. My son. Minato wanted to spring up and say something, but he soon realized that going back to a resting position and closing his eyes was a bad idea. He seemed to be stuck there as he had lost the energy to move. Annoyed, he decided to keep still to listen. I told you, I pulled a prank on that Junin who shoved me into a trash can so he chased me all over. I had to hide, so I went into the warehouse building to see if I could find a place to hide. I found a spot and realized there was some light coming from the floor. I found the trapdoor and decided to look around. I had to sneak around a few guards, but I was checking rooms to see what was here when I found him. They amazing, and Naruto-kun. This time, it was a female voice. I know, right Hinata? So, do you believe me now, Kiba? No way. We only got here this time due to my nose and Hinata's eyes. It would have been easy if we had Akimaru, but Hanani-chan is doing his checkup. If we had so many problems, no way a dead last like you could do it by yourself. That's and not true, Kiba-san. And Naruto-kun could do it be by himself. He is are really good at this K kind of stuff. He see can do anything if he pee puts his mind to it. It was followed by a squeak. Thanks Hinata. I didn't know you believed in me like that. Nani, Hinata. Hinata. Are you okay? Wake up, did I squeeze you too hard? Taking in memories from long ago, he could see the picture of what was happening quite well. His son was a stealthy prankster who apparently didn't do well in class, Kiba must be the same Kiba Tsum had, and Hinata must have been Hiashi's daughter, who was quite shy and seemed to have a crush on his son. The irony of Hiashi's failed attempt to get him and Kishina to sign a betrothal contract between the two after he found out he was having a girl was not lost on him. 
Feeling his energy coming back to him, he opened his eyes and managed to whisper aloud. Naruto. The surprise of the three intruders was obvious. Hinata, a petite girl in a big jacket with lavender blue hair and a heim cut, was just awakening and was on the ground, having fallen over in surprise. Kiba, with red cheek marks and a big grey jacket, jumped and began to look at the yandame. But Naruto, his Naruto, with spiky blonde hair, wide blue eyes, whisker marks, and wearing an orange jumpsuit just looked confused. He thought it was understandable, the man did just suddenly awake and say his name. HH hi, Yandame sama Naruto was obviously stunned by the development. Minato quickly realized that Hiruzen hadn't told Naruto about his parentage, which made sense. Iwa was still angry at him no doubt, and putting Naruto in the crossfire of that village was at the top of the list of ways not to protect him. Come. Here. He called him over, causing Naruto, still wide-eyed, to shuffle over to his bedside. Then, slowly, he forced his hand up. He could barely lift it higher than a foot off the bed, but it was high enough to put his hand on his son's chest. He could feel Kiba and Hinata look very intently at the two of them, wondering what was about to happen. Naruto looked down at the Yandame's hand on his chest, unsure what to do. He looked back at the man, now smiling, and asked, yes, Yandame-sama. Minato took a big breath and said two words that meant so much to both of them. Hello, son. SS son. Naruto began to stutter like a Hyuga heiress. Minato managed to nod. Yes, son. In the same vein as the Hyuga heiress, Naruto fainted. Minato was only mildly surprised by this response and forced his body to move so he could check on his son. He looked okay, there was no obvious damage, which Minato breathed a sigh of relief for. He continued to stare at his son, his son, when a small voice broke his concentration. Why why Yandame sama He turned to the feminine voice and saw Hinata moving slowly but surely towards them. Yes Hinata? Minato asked calmly. Hinata blushed as somehow the Yandame knew her name, but she was smart enough to realize he must have overheard their conversation. Hey are you really Naruto Kunef father? She began to poke her fingers together, something Minato assumed was a nervous habit. Minato smiled at her and nodded. Yes, I am. But how? Kiba asked, incredulous at the development. How do you think? Minato bluntly replied, leading to a small blush from the Inuzuka and a heavy blush from the Hayuga. No, I mean Naruto is an okay guy and all, but he isn't that good at being a ninja. He already failed the genin exam. How can he have someone famous and awesome like you be his father? Kiba asked. And another thing, how the heck are you here? Kiba asked the obvious question. I see I am not sure myself. I have a feeling why, but I hope it is not true. As for the second I don't really know. I had just finished the Shaiki Fujin seal and has sealed the yin half of the Kaiubi into myself and the yang half into Naruto when I felt a pain. I assumed it was the Shinigami taking my soul, but now I'm not sure. Before I passed out from it, I was able to say a few words to Saratobi Minato began to talk more to himself, but revealed shocking information to all conscious children. Nani? A double dream? Did I eat bad ramen or something? I mean, the first one I was the Yandame's son, and now he says I have the Kaiubi sealed into me. Maybe it was the milk, it did taste funny. Naruto began to talk to himself, his reaction catching Minato's attention. Then he looked up to Hinata and Kiba, both of whom had shocked reactions. What? What did I say? Minato was confused by their confusion. Did you just say you sealed part of the Kaiubi into Naruto? Kiba bluntly asked him. Minato was surprised. You didn't know. He looked around and saw it was obvious that they hand. Why would Saratobi keep it a secret? Hinata surprisingly spoke up. Th that's why Ko San S said to stay away from Naruto kun. She contemplated aloud, being heard by everyone. What did you mean, this Ko said stay away? Minato asked, not liking what he heard. It wasn't just him. A few people in my clan said to stay away from Naruto, that he was dangerous. I thought they were being dumb, but I think get it now. Naruto began to look wildly around. Okay, this is getting really weird for a dream. What's next, flying pigs? He paused, actually waiting for it. Okay, I guess not them. Naruto-kun, this is no dream. I am your father, and I did have to seal part of the Kaiubi into you. Minato tried to get his son to believe, but Naruto was stubborn to a fault. No way, that is just ridiculous. All of a sudden, he found himself on the floor and began to rub his head. He turned to see Kiba, who had just bopped his head. Kiba, what was that for? Did it hurt? Huh? Kiba sighed. I said, did it hurt? Uh. If that hurt, you can't be in a dream, now can you? Naruto eyes opened to that basic realization hit him. This was real life. He was the Yandame's son. He had part of the Kaiubi sealed into him. Why didn't you just kill the Kaiubi? Why did you have to seal the Kaiubi into me? Minato had been mentally growling at his hidden fears of being realized that his village had disobeyed his last decree and had not treated Naruto well. He still heard the question and quickly explained. You can't kill the Kaiubi. 
it is a massive charka and would simply reform in a few years. I tied as much of it as I could with my soul, so it would be sealed away forever in Shinigami's stomach, but I couldn't seal it all. So instead, I sealed the rest in you for protection. Protection. Naruto's exclamation was more accusatory, but Minato explained anyway. The master Chiha who attacked me that night will come again, and I wanted to make sure you had the ability to defeat him when he does. Master Chiha. What are you talking about? All we learned in school was that the Kaiubi came to Konoha, you had to fight it, and you killed it with the help of your summon. Naruto told his father. Minato grunted. Saratobi kept too much from everyone. Let me explain what happened that night. Then, to the three people there, he told the story. He first revealed the history of Kaiubi containers in Konoha's history, including Naruto's mother, and the issues of them giving birth. He explained how, as Naruto was born, a masked Chiha attacked and forced the Kaiubi out of the seal. He then managed to control it and force it to attack. Then, he talked about having to defeat the Achiha who had kidnapped Naruto and held him hostage. Then, he talked about the tough decision he had to make of sealing away the Kaiubi and having to worry about the mask Achiha. He told them about how he sealed half of it inside himself and managed to seal the other half into Naruto as Naruto's mother and himself protected from the Kaiubi attack on Naruto to preserve the freedom. Then the pain and his last words to Siratobi that he wanted Naruto to be seen as a hero. But apparently this was not the case. The village fell to illogical fears and no doubt horrible rumors. I'm sorry son, about how you were treated. Minato finally finished, looking at his son, whose face was turned down from him. He was scared that it was anger that Naruto was feeling, but then he saw the drips fall to the floor. He wasn't the only one to notice. And Naruto-kun. Hinata reached out her hand in an effort to comfort him, but was stopped when he began to spoke. Don't worry. They weren't too bad on me. Just some name calling and them ignoring me. A few kids tried to bully me, but I dealt with it. It isn't your fault they didn't listen. He raised his head, tears coming down his face, but he was wearing a smile. Oh to san Minato's eyes immediately teared up due to his son forgiving him. He reached his arms out, and Naruto stepped into them. They wrapped into a big hug, Minato stroking his son's hair while Naruto smiled and cried into his shoulder. Minato saw Hinata gave them a warm smile, while Kiba muttered something about dust. I'm sorry I wasn't there, Naruto. But I will be for now on. Naruto stepped out from the hug and flashed him a big grin. He was happy at the prospect of having a dad. I, I always wanted to have a family. Naruto admitted, trying to stop his crying. Minato smiled. You will know. He stopped and looked around. But, a question. Where exactly am I? Minato couldn't help but ask. He knew his son knew the way, and then he could figure it out by what he told him. Um, I don't really know. I found this place by going into this empty wagon warehouse on the Maple Road. Minato took a second to think and nod his head. I know what this is. An Anbu hideout. The question is, how did you sneak in? Because, Minato, I foolishly let the seal protecting it expire. The four people turned to see who spoke. At the door, in full decorum and a walking cane, stood the Hokage with a masked man with spiky gray hair. I see. So, could you please explain a few things to me? Like what exactly happened? Minato asked. He was now sitting on his bed, his energy growing surprisingly fast for a man in a coma for over a decade. The Hokage nodded. Yes. Though I believe someone would like to speak with you. He motioned to the masked ninja, who slowly walked towards Minato. Hello. Sensei. The masked man politely said, obviously having been struck in some sort of awe. Minato barely nodded his head. Kakashi. Kakashi nervously fidgeted with his hands, he couldn't help himself. I, I was worried you would never wake up. I've been checking up on you as often as I can. I'm better spent checking and help raising my son. Minato bitterly spat, his anger obvious. What? Kakashi was surprised by this response. My son was there, alone, no family, and my one student could have helped him, given him that much. But you didn't. Don't you remember what Abito used to say? Minato was truly angry at this man. Jureya Jureya had an excuse. He has to keep up his spy network, he couldn't raise a child. But you what's your excuse? But, but I did help, Sensei. Who do you think watched him when he was young and defenseless? Who do you think made sure he stayed safe? Made sure he didn't go to a bad family? I did. Kakashi was quick to defend himself to his sensei. He would never simply let his sensei's son down. Anyone could have done that. But you could have given him family. Someone to comfort him. There is no excusing you. Minato was obviously angry, his eyes turning the barest hint of purple. The three academy students backed away, worried about what was about to happen, but didn't blame Minato one bit. Diba thought Kakashi was trash for abandoning the pack, Hinata was mad that he didn't help Naruto cut out. She wanted to, at least, but was too afraid that he wouldn't accept it or would see that she was weak and reject her. Naruto, he was more broken-hearted. 
Someone could have cared for him, someone that knew his mother and father, but didn't. Naruto knew that, while he grew up, Anbu had oddly watched out for him. But he didn't ever know it was this guy, in fact, he knew it was a bunch of people. Naruto wasn't sure he could forgive this man. Akashi wanted to say something, but really wasn't sure what to say. He couldn't really defend against his sensei's allegations. Finally, Minato told him a command. I can't even look at you right now, Kakashi. Go. He pointed to the door. But Kakashi tried to put up a defense, but Minato simply jabbed his finger to the door. Go. Kakashi tried to say something, but the Hokage put a hand on his shoulder. Kakashi, nothing will be solved as of now. It is probably best if you leave. Kakashi opened his mouth to say something, but silently closed it. He made his exit from the room, obviously dejected. Minato watched Kakashi leave and calmed himself down. He turned to his son and his friends. I'm sorry about that, Naruto-kun. Just, that man should have been there for you. Naruto shook his head. No dad, I get it. I'm mad too at him. Kiba and Hinata gave confirming nods. The Hokage stepped into the Kakashi Hadafus circle to try and break it. Anyway, I think it is time I tell you how you survived, Minato. Eight eyes turned to the old man, and eight ears were ready for every word. I was shocked when I reached the scene to see that you and Kashina were still alive. I would have thought she had already passed because of the Kaiubi being released from her, and I thought that Shinigami would have already taken your soul. I noticed Kashina was making motions and suddenly struck you with a chakra-infused strike to your stomach before she passed on. I managed to get to you, and you told me about your final wish before you died. I left with Naruto to get him to safety while I told my Anbu to get your bodies to safety. I made the announcement and was shocked by the backlash and calls for Naruto's execution. I then made it a law that no one was to speak of the Kaiubi inside of you, Naruto, so that you had a chance with the younger generation. Upon returning, I was greeted by an Anbu who told me that you were in fact still alive. You were put on life support and I and a few medic nins inspected you to see how you lived. I noticed the alteration to your seal, from knowing the basic design from Naruto's seal, and, fearing what that meant, called for your student Jiraiya to return from his duties to see what it meant. He was back within a few days and inspected the new seal until he had determined what had happened. The motions I saw Kashina doing were in preparation of a seal, a powerful seal she had learned in her studies of her clan's Fuinjutsu scrolls. It had been apparently created during the times of the Nidame when he created that jutsu. The children already knew so much, but there was no reason to reveal to them the existence of that jutsu. A seal to seal one soul to their body. You see the practical uses for it to counter that jutsu, but Kashina used it for her own purposes. To try and prevent the Shinigami from claiming your soul. It worked, for the most part, the most part. Minato asked, wondering what that could mean. The Shina attempts were focused on your soul and not the yin portion of the Kaiubi, so the Shinigami took as much of it as it could. It also tried to take your soul, but the seal worked mostly. However, it was able to take a small but sizable portion of your soul. What exactly does that mean? Naruto asked, the first to voice the question to what did it mean if you lost part of your soul. From what we can tell, it does not mean you will become more soulless or heartless, but instead will limit your capabilities. A full soul has full capabilities, but a non-whole one means I can't be the shinobi I once was, ever. The realization hit Minato really hard that he could never be able to protect the village he always cared about like he once did. Tsuritobi nodded. Yes, but you can still be a fine one, Minato. The three kids looked at one another. Ayano, W what about the Kaiubi and why Yandame sama Hinata stuttered out, wondering what happened to it. Was it fully gone? Tsuritobi looked at her and back to Minato. Consider it a blessing that a portion of it was still left in you, Minato. If it had been fully extracted, you would have died due to the damage once incurs when a piece of one's soul has been ripped out. It has also kept your mind intact, a blessing in itself. Minato nodded. I have to say so. I think I think it is helping with my energy as well. I felt so tired when I woke up, but now, but now I feel like I could do so much. A small grumble was heard. Especially eat. Tsuritobi nodded. Of course. I will retrieve a nurse to get some food for you while another can watch over you three. He looked over them. There are quite a few things we will have to discuss before you are let go. Tsuritobi then made a seal that normally would make Naruto Uzumaki famous. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Two Tsuritobis appeared and left the room to fulfill those tasks. He then turned to Naruto. Naruto, I have to tell you that I'm sorry. I know you may hate me for keeping your heritage or the secret of the Kaiubi, but believe I thought it was in your best interest. And I'm sorry that I couldn't protect you better from the scorn of the villagers. Naruto shrugged it off. That's okay, Jiji. It doesn't matter, you at least tried your best. He sat on the bed next to his father. I know now, and I have my Otu-san with me, so everything will get better. He ended with a smile. It warmed Suratobi's heart, the real smile Naruto gave. Yes, Naruto. 
yes it will. Leonardo took a breath to take it all in and decided it was time for him to get and now his son. So, Naruto, tell me about yourself. I want to know about my son. Naruto gave a grin as Minato learned about his son. Well, I'm 11 years old and live in a pretty okay apartment by myself. I love to prank people, especially big jerks. I also like to garden a bit, Narchuo kicked Kiba in the shins when he gave a slight chuckle and trained to become Hokage someday. Minato gave a smile. So, you want to be like me, huh? Naruto gave a slight blush at the realization. I guess that's right. I always looked up to you, wanting to be like you. Who would have ever thought you would be my dad? Minato gave a small chuckle. It's good to know I was your idol, even thought I wasn't around. He let out a sigh. What is it, dad? Minato loved hearing Naruto call him that. Oh, it's just, I can't wait to begin teaching you. This coma has been stopping me, but I promise, I will make that up to you, and you will become Hokage. Naruto took a gulp. Do you mean that? You will help me and everything. Minato suddenly pulled his son into a hug. Of course. That is what a dad is supposed to do, help their kids achieve their dreams. Naruto froze for a moment, then slowly hugged back his dad. Thank you. Was all that he could say, as he tried to keep his eyes dry. Minato gave a warm smile at the heartwarming scene, and Kiba looked on feeling happy for his buddy and a bit jealous about Naruto's luck of getting his father back. Saratobi watched on with a smile on his face when the memory of one of his cage bunchen came back to him. Food will be here in a moment, Minato. Minato broke from the hug slowly, turning to his predecessor and successor. Thank you. Saratobi began to nod his head but was stopped by the dispelling of his other cage bunchen. Also, a nurse to watch you three is on the way. I apologize, Naruto, about having to break up this reunion, but there are some important issues I have to talk to your father about immediately. Naruto hesitantly accepted. All right, Jiji. He got off the bed and stood with Kiba and Hinata. Two nurses soon entered the room, one ushering out the trio and taking them to a separate room, while the other gave him a meal of rice with broth, fish, and some pickled vegetables. Bowing to the two leaders, she let them leave. Minato began to eat his meal as Saratobi began to cast multiple privacy jutsus and seals to make sure his conversation with Minato went off in total secrecy. Minato quickly devoured everything on his plate, a not unexpected action from someone in a coma for 11 years. Finishing off the second of two glasses of water given to him, Minato set his tray to the side, signaling to Saratobi that he was ready to talk. I have to say, I'm surprised. Saratobi admitted to the blonde, who was slowly trying to move his legs to get the blood circulating, about what? Minato asked, unsure what he could exactly be surprised about. Your anger. Why is it focused on Kakashi and not myself or Jiraiya or your best friend Hisashi Hayuga? He was going to mention the fate of the man's friend later on. Simple. I expected Kakashi to be the one to step up and raise my son. Isn't that a little unfair? He was barely a teenager himself when you went into your coma, he had lost all of his teammates and then his sensei. A boy taking on that sort of duty, under those circumstances the Hokage tried to defend Kakashi, a loyal man who he thought shouldn't be getting the blame. True, he was a bit young when it happened, but he has had 11 years to get over it and stop the same pain and loneliness that he went through when his father committed seppuku from occurring to my son. I may have made sensei his godfather, but I even told Kakashi that if something were to happen to me and Kishina that he was to raise Naruto in our place. A few years leeway, sure, but what happened? He abandoned him, Saratobi abandoned him. That is something I will not soon forget. I never knew you told him. Minato nodded to his question. But still, why do you feel no hate to me, or your sensei, or your best friend? That is not completely true, Saratobi. Minato corrected the man. I am a bit mad at your three, but I know you each had good reasons. You were, no doubt in my mind, going to be named Hokage again, and Bawako, your wife of 40 years, had just died. You also were here for Naruto, I can tell simply by the name he calls you, Jiji. Minato smiled at that. I thank you for your efforts, but I cannot help but wish you had done more. Gureya should have been there when Kakashi failed his duty, as godfather alone he should have had a role in Naruto's life, but he has his duties as spymaster for Konoha which keep him away for long periods of time. He couldn't bring Naruto along, and simply leaving him here alone for months at a time might have been more cruel. If Kakashi had done as I asked, then he could have done so. No, it was quite possibly for the best Naruto, and he did not meet yet. His demeanor cracked into a smile and my son wouldn't be perverted like he is. Saratobi decided to let Minato learn from his son about how perverted he actually was. Damn Warwick no jutsu, he couldn't help but thinking to himself. As for his Ashi, well, he is a branch member of the Hyuga clan. If he had wanted to adopt my son, he would have been marked. And had I woken up to find this out, I would probably kill he Ashi for putting that damned mark on my son's head, a mark which I still have not figured out to cancel or remove. 
Oh well I see he has the stole in the heart of his niece, something he hasn't realized yet, what is his relationship to his son, my godchild, Niji. Sirotobi sighed, not wishing he would have to bring it up this soon. He had also forgotten about Minato's status as godfather over him. None, but it is not by his Ashi's choice. It is a sad tale, but one you must know. Kumo tried to attack us after the Kyubi's destruction to our village, but we repelled them and forced them to sign a treaty roughly three years. Minato grumbled at the actions of the Reikage, but he was not surprised by what the man had done. They sent their head Jonin to sign the treaty here in Kanoha, but it was a damn ploy. They used it as an attempt to kidnap the Hyuga heiress, the very girl you met. She was only three at the time, there was little she could do, but Hiashi, but Hiashi was brutal when he caught up with and killed the man. That was when things got bad. Kumo claimed innocence and threatened to restart the war unless they got the body of Hiashi Hayuga. What did you do? Minato, had he been at full strength, would have already been making plans to talk with the Rakage, and he was not looking forward to hear how this story ended. I told the Hayuga clan to obey. As precious as that one person may be, the safety of Kanoha overrides the safety of any one man. Hiashi was ready to obey, but the elders made the suggestion to use his Ashi, his twin. Hiashi confessed to me he tried to stop it, but Hizashi told him it was his way of being free, of escaping the mark. So, Hizashi's life was ended and he was sent to Kumo. They were quite angry with us, but we were able to claim it was Hiashi's, and they were forced to honor their commitment. Winato sighed and laid back. After a minute of thinking, he smiled. He found a way to escape the mark. Way to go, Hizashi. He looked up to the Hokage. Anything else of note happen? Tsuritobi nodded. Yes, something that ties directly to your mask Acha. Minato nearly jumped out of his bed. What? Well, if Itachi is correct, that mask Achiha was in fact Madara Achiha. Madara? Impossible. He died he died decades ago. Tsuritobi nodded. I wish that was the case, but it is not. No, Itachi is certain that it is Madara. Minato glared downwards, his fears about the dangers of the masked man realized. Then, an obvious question hit him. Itachi. As in Fugaku and Makoto's child. How did he find out? Tsuritobi sighed. He is now an undercover agent for Konoha in a group called Akatsuki, a group Madara secretly fronts. Akatsuki, isn't that the name of the group of rebels from Omegakur? Minato asked. The old man nodded. Hi, but they reformed after their first failure and have defeated Hanzo and taken control of AIM. Their goals beyond this we fear might include the Kaiubi, but we are not sure. Anything that damned Ichiha is involved with is sure to be trouble. How did you begin to suspect this Akatsuki group? Ureya found them on his hunt for Orochimaru, apparently they let him join. Then, their leader convinced Itachi to join once he was on the run, where he met up with Madara again. On the run? Again? What exactly did Itachi do? Tsuritobi told him. About the suspicions of the Ichiha clan based on the eyewitness testimony of multiple Anbu who saw an Ichiha flee the scene and knowledge that only a Sharingan can control a tailed beast. The Ichiha clan deciding they were being mistreated. Plans for a revolt. Itachi, the prodigal Anbu captain acting as a double agent. The Ichiha is getting suspicious. The orders of extermination handed down from the elders. Sparing his little brother. The lie that everyone was told. The revelation of an accomplice, a masked Ichiha named Tobi, who he believes to be Madara. Minato listened to all of this and mourned quietly. He knew many of the Ichiha, had trusted his life to many of the Ichiha, and he mourned their lives and decision that brought them death. He mourned his wife's friend, his rival, he mourned the Ichiha. Somberly he began to swing his legs off of the bed, letting them dangle off the floor. Then, with great care, he forced himself to stand up. Saratobi rushed him, making sure he didn't fall. Minato, you have just been in a coma for over a decade. You need to rest until your body is ready. He sternly told him, not wanting something bad to happen to him. Minato used his bed as support. I have been resting for a decade, if anything I need to move around. And don't worry, it seems the Kaiubi's chakra, whatever is left of it, is helping me get better at an incredible rate. He let go of the bed as support and made a step for the door. It wasn't pretty, but it was progress. Tsuritobi made his way next to him. Why are you in such a hurry to move? Minato didn't say anything, but forced his legs to move forward. He managed to make it to the door before he needed a rest. His legs, despite the healing properties of the Kaiubi, were aching from the sudden use. He put his hand against the wall, giving time for the pain to dull. Saratobi was still next to him. Minato, there is no need to walk to get Naruto. I could send for him. Minato just shook his head. Not Naruto. He grabbed the door handle and opened the door, marching his way through. It was then when Saratobi realized that Minato was only wearing a hospital gown. You realize you need some clothes first. You are only in a hospital gown. Minato looked down and realized this was true. Fine, he spoke. A nurse in the hallway, the one that brought him food, caught his eye. 
Nurse Chan, bring me a pair of clothes and a bouquet of red roses. The nurse simply nodded and complied. Saratobi was confused. What are the flowers for? Where are you going? Kashina. Saratobi looked at the two clan heads standing across from him in his office, Hiyashi Hayuga and Tsumin Yuzuka, and mentally sighed. He was going to get a lot of lip from them for what he was about to reveal. I am sorry for interrupting your busy days, but a matter has come up that needed to be brought to both of your intentions. Nothing was said by either party, both patiently waiting for the reasoning, but Saratobi could tell Tsum was a little bit on edge. Today, I apprehended your daughter, Hinata, your son Kiba, and Naruto Yuzumaki inside of a classified area. This simple little comment caused a reaction to both clan heads. What the heck was my brat doing with your brat and the Yuzumaki brat? She turned to Hiashi, seemingly to blame him. Hiashi let out a small sigh. If I'm correct, then they were both fooled into believing a highly disrespectful prank Yuzumaki tried to pull in the academy today. What are you talking about? Tsum bluntly asked the proper clan leader. Yuzumaki is taking classes with my nephew, who is set to graduate next month, as he is attempting to graduate early. Today, my nephew told me about how the Yuzumaki said he found the Yandame alive and was willing to prove it. Somehow, he convinced my daughter and your son into coming with him. I always knew my daughter's skills were weak, but being unable to catch such a blatant lie. An outrage to the Hayuga name. He firmly spoke to the room. Siratobi nodded. Quite true. Such a blatant lie should be caught by a well-trained Hayuga. However, it was no lie. Even he Ashi couldn't stop himself from whipping his neck around, like Tsum did. What are you talking about, Hokujama? She was quick to ask. Naruto Yuzumaki was not telling a lie. Until this information is revealed to the public, this is a SSS class secret, understand? Saratobi told them. Shocked by the insane classification level, both quietly complied. You both know the full story of how Minato defeated the Kaiubi, correct? The Ashi nodded. Of course, you told the Jonin Council this years ago. Sealing half inside himself to got with him to Shinigami, he sealed the other half inside the Yuzumaki. He couldn't seal the entire beast into himself, and for his plan to work to save Konoha, he was forced to divide the burden between himself and an orphan. Saratobi listened to the rehash of what he told them 11 years before, and nodded. That is what you were told. However, much was kept from the council that day. He then proceeded to tell them the almost complete story about what Kishina had done, about Naruto's true heritage, and how Minato had been kept in a secret base until that time he recovered. At the end of the story, Hiashi was contemplative, and Tsum was pissed. Why couldn't you trust us? You know none of us would ever betray you. The clans of Kanoha are your most loyal of followers. Even the bastard Ichihas, bless them in their grave could be trusted. Tsum barked out, wishing she had brought her partner for backup. It hurt Saratobi the irony in that statement, but there was nothing he could say to it, but, I did not want a perverse bidding war for a boy because of his legacy when his father had a chance to wake up and raise his son. And I did not want to raise people's hopes if Minato had never woke up or had simply passed away during his coma. While far from ideal, I did what I thought was best in the situation. Tsum attempted to argue, but Hiashi interrupted her. I understand, Hokage-sama. If it had been me, I would have made the same decision. Tsum turned her head to the Hayuga. What have you been drinking, Hiashi-san? Hiashi ignored the insult, but answered the Inuzuka head. Secrets are better kept in the hands for a few. If you want proof of this, look at what happened to Naruto-sama's secret of containing the Kaiubi. Once it was known to the masses, lies and corruption of the original tale were created, as were conspiracies, until the truth was hidden and a system of hatred was developed towards him. Tsum shot out a glare to the Hayuga, but turned in a huff away from him. So, Hokage-sama, what is going to happen to my pup? And Hiashi's little girl, too. Siratobi simply sighed. It is very complicated. Well I wish I could simply keep your children at the base and not let them out until I announce to the public the survival of Minato, trying so would be very foolish. Between your two clans, you would find the location and compromise a safe house if you chose to object to my plan. So rather, I am ordering that they be reprimanded to the compound house for the next week or so, until the revelation can be made. Tsum thought about it for a moment and gave a small grin. That isn't too bad. I can make Kiba do chores until he drops. The Ashi ignored the scheming of the woman next to him and gave a curt nod, signaling agreement to the solution. It would be best to do so. He paused for a moment and decided to ask. Has Minato said anything about his duties as Niji's godfather? Ignoring Tsum's surprise at the statement, Saratobi nodded. He knows of his Ashi's fate, and from what I felt when I spoke with him, he is quite angry with Kumarite now. For his duties he has other things he needs to contend with first. The Ashi could guess what that meant and nodded in agreement. Minato was now able to freely walk without too much of a hassle and did so on the outskirts of Kanoha with his son and Anbu assistant. 
he and his son wore black cloaks over their clothing, his son's orange jumpsuit and the white dress shirt and the navy blue shinobi pants he had been given. Each man had a bouquet of roses in their hands as they quietly followed the Anbu assistant to their destination. Naruto eventually broke the silence. What was she like? Minato, knowing implicitly who he was talking about, gave a warm smile. She always loved to talk and had the most cheerful personality, just like you seem too. Naruto smiled at the compliment. What else? He asked, almost impatiently. Naruto let his mind wander as he thought about his long-deceased wife. Quick to temper. If you did anything wrong to her, you'd be sure to know. A bit of a tomboy at heart though, she hated girly colors and girly things. Fearless too. One time, during the treaty discussions during the Third Shinobi War, she smacked the Yandane Kazakiage for not trying hard enough to do a good job for his people. It surprised everyone at the table. She was also very loyal to Konoha, even though she wasn't from here. Naruto was surprised. What do you mean, she wasn't from Konoha? He had not expected this fact at all. Minato explained. Your mother was from the island village off the coast of the Land of Fire, in the Land of Whirlpools. It was destroyed by Kumo, Iwa and Yugikur during the Second Shinobi War because of how they feared how strong it would become if left unchecked for any longer. Your mother was in a clan that based itself in the Land of Whirlpools who was already feared and was sent to Konoha for training by the clan due to their good relations with us among other things. Minato never liked talking about the burden his wife held, the same burden passed on to their son. After her village was destroyed, she eventually steeled herself to becoming the best member of Konoha she could be, so she chose the goal of Hokage to do such a thing. Naruto was quiet as he thought about what his father said. Eventually he turned to him and simply said. I wish I had met her. Minato simply gave him a soft smile. I know son. I wish you could have met her too. They were heading through a break into the forest into the desired field when the Anbu stopped them. What's wrong? Naruto asked, looking around in some worry. His mind immediately drifted to a ninja attack, which scared him. His dad, a weird concept for him but the truth, was saw very powerful but was still fairly weak and he, thought destined to become Hokage, couldn't even do a bunch incorrectly. He just hoped the Anbu would be enough if it was an attack. It appears someone else is already at the grave. Naruto looked through the gap and saw the ninja, Kakashi, who was supposed to watch him but didn't, kneeling in front of a grave. Naruto was wondering what the heck he was doing and looked up at his father to see what he thought. His father was staring at the man too, very intently. Naruto decided to say nothing for once. Bakashi knew they were there. He wasn't a top jonin for nothing. But he was going to finish this conversation before he left his sensei and his son alone to speak. I just I hope you don't think I failed him. It is bad enough for sensei to think that, but if you both I made a promise that day to never turn my back on my comrades, and I think I kept it. I'm almost certain I did. I just hope sensei understands this soon. He's here to talk to you now. And Naruto's here too. That is one thing I could have done, taking him here. But I think it was probably for him to come and see you with his father. Hopefully it won't take me 11 years to see you again, Kishina-sama. Good day. With that, Kakashi shunshin it out of the field and left the three he sensed to do what they came to do. Minato slowly walked behind the Anbu assistant to the grave Kakashi had been at, only confirming his suspicions. Naruto solemnly followed as they crossed the field before the Anbu stopped in front of a grave marker. Her final resting place is here, Minato-sama. I will leave you and your child to mourn. The Anbu quickly vanished from sight, though he was not completely gone. The two blondes each had their bouquet of roses in front of them as they read the grave in front of them. Here lies the remains of Kashina Yuzumaki, wife of the Yandame Hokage, heiress of the former Yuzumaki clan, July 10 XXXX October 10 XXXX. Mom was a heiress? Naruto asked as he read the grave marker. Minato slowly nodded as he was pulled out of his focus of his beloved's last resting place. By Kanoha's standard she was, but not to the Yuzumaki clan. She was only called that since her mother was considered the top ninja in the clan and the de facto leader. Naruto simply nodded and stared at the grave marker some more. Finally taking the initiative, he put his bouquet of roses in front of the marker and kissed it. Hey mom, it's me Naruto. I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't come here before, but I wish I had. Jiji told me that you both had died beating the Kaiubi and I wanted to visit your graves, but I wasn't allowed. Dad is here though, he's been in a coma for a while, since you saved his life. By this point, Naruto was fighting tears as his words grew deeper and more emotional. Thank you for that. You found a way so that I could have a parent. Even though he wasn't there for me when I was little, he's here now and he is never going to leave. Naruto flashed a big grin to the marker, trying to show her spirit how much it meant to him. Dad told me that you loved me and couldn't wait to raise me. And thinking on it I love you too, Kachan. But that line, Naruto backed from the marker and wiped his eyes. Minato gave him a gentle pat on the shoulder and then laid his flowers on the grave marker before giving it a kiss. It's me Kashina. 
It has taken me 11 years, but I can finally say thank you. I thought I was going to die that day, but you figured out a way to save me and stop Naruto from losing the chance to know his parents. I love you so much, and I will accomplish our dream together. I became Hokage, and I will now raise Naruto to be the best he can be, like we said we would. Turning to Naruto, he asked. Can you give me a second alone with Kishina-chan, Naruto? Naruto nodded and backed off to let his dad have a few private words with his mom. Judging Naruto to be far enough away, Minato kneeled in front of the grave. I wish it had been you, he began to confess, I wish it had been you that survived and not me. I had been prepared to die that day to save Konoha, but you weren't. You just expected to have a tough but rewarding birth and the chance to hold our son. Not let the beast get free and ruin our village. His fingers went over her name slowly. I'm going to miss you. I mean, of course I would, but I really will. I can promise you there will never be anyone else for me, and I will do my best to raise Naruto, even though he has pretty much raised himself. I can't wait to see you again, but don't hate me when I say I hope it isn't soon. I love you, my fiery habanero. Minato didn't notice the tears coming from his eyes until he realized the tears dropping onto the grave marker as he kissed it again. He wiped his eyes clear and stood up, beckoning his son over. Come on, Naruto. I want to take you to my and Kishina's house. Your new home. Naruto's eyes went wide at the thought of having a home. He didn't say anything though, but just walked slowly to his father. The Anbu assistant came into view and followed the duo to their new home. I know some people don't like my treatment of Kakashi, but it will remain in place for a while. This is not Kakashi bashing, however. This is just a character not liking another character because he has lost all trust in him. The Ashi and Tsum don't know everything that their children know, but they know enough so that they won't be interrogating them on what they know. Hiraya will come in next chapter, and the rebirth of Minato as a ninja will come with it. Don't worry, Naruto will start getting his baddest levels up next chapter too. Look for chapter 6 to be the big reveal to Konoha, near the end. And don't worry, the Niji Godfather fact will be addressed next time. Until then, relax. 7 8. Naruto pushed his body off the ground, his stamina finally beginning to wear on him. Minato looked on, somewhat embarrassed that his 11-year-old son had beaten him in a contest of push-ups by so much. He had only enough stamina to last 28 push-ups at the moment, good for a man in his physical condition and a miracle for one who had only been in a coma four days beforehand. The Kyubi's chakra, the only part of the beast left inside of him, was quick to replenish his energy levels and let him continue the almost non-stop training he had been going under. His muscles, while deteriorated, were not totally lost and were very quick to come back to acceptable levels. His other capabilities were still well below what he wanted. A 9-minute mile, 46 sit-ups, 63 jumping jacks. He knew he had to grow strong for his son, for his future, for his village. Village. Kanoha, he admitted to himself, was not anywhere near the same high opinion he held of it in life before the coma. Though he admitted to himself he should have foreseen the poor treatment of his son. A common villager, or even many of the shinobi, would not understand how great of a seal master he was and could see that if he sealed a spirit inside of something, it was safe. But no, all they saw was the beast and feared when it would take over. The lack of confidence the village showed in him after life appalled him, but it had saved itself from his hatred. Only twice did people try and kill his son, but the matter was dealt with before his son was at any risk. And in the last 10 years, no adult went out of their way to physically hurt him, just a blanket shunning of him. There were gaps to this, however. A foster mother for his first two years. A less biased orphanage owner for five. A fair landlord for the last four. Other people who acknowledged him and not the demon, like the Ichikaris. And the youth, some of the smarter youth, found companionship with his son. The child of Tsum and Kiba Sr. Kami bless his soul, of Shikaku and Yoshino, Chaos and Nagami, and Hiashi and Hitomi, though neither knew of how their daughter cared for H.I.M., and Hitomi never would. He still loved the village and its people that would never die. However, the faith he once had in the village to do the moral good had diminished greatly. He watched his son push himself up again. A tie. He let out a great huff and went to his knees and elbows. Panting a bit, Naruto looked up to his father and let out a grin. That was, huff, really tough, huff, especially after, huff, the sit-ups, huff, and the jumping jacks. Minato nodded. Though it is good to see how well physically fit you are. You will not be easily winded in a fight or a mission. Naruto smiled at his dad. Well, that is because, huff, I'm always training and stuff. Huff, he exclaimed to his dad. Minato hid the regret in his face. His son should have had a bunch of friends to play with, parents to love and care for him, he shouldn't have had to have always been training. His strength, his speed, his intensity, all great things, but the cost had been too great in Minato's eyes. Well, that is good to hear, but I don't want you to overdo. Focusing on training too much can make you miss the little things that you should enjoy. Minato told his son, thinking of Kakashi and Rin as prime examples. 
Narita frowned. But if I don't train as much as I can huff, then how can I ever become Hokage like you, dad? Bonato smiled and ruffled the hair of his son. Well, it took me years to become strong enough to earn the right to be Hokage. But you don't need to focus at all on training, you need to take a break and enjoy the good things in life. Naruto took a few breaths to normalize his breathing. Like what? A new voice suddenly popped up. Like girls. You're what now, Eleven? I bet you are noticing the fine feminine physique. Suddenly, through the door of the modest home that Minato lived in on the outskirts of the village, an older man appeared. With his long spiky white hair, odd headband, giant scroll on his back, and lecherous face, Naruto wasn't sure what to think of this newcomer, even if he did cause a blush to come to his face. He jumped to his feet and in front of his dad, who he knew still wasn't physically strong enough to fight someone yet. Who are you? The old man grinned at the opportunity to introduce himself. He began to move across the room in an odd formalized dance as he spoke. I am the great toad sage of Mount Mayabuku, the man women love to love and men love to hate, the legendary Sanin, Jiraiya. Naruto processed the information for a second before sighing. Oh, you're just my dad's old pervert sensei. He was actually disappointed, wanting someone to fight. Jiraiya face vaulted. Picking himself up, he looked toward Minato. Is that all you told of him about me? That I'm a pervert? Minato let out a smirk and shook his head. Of course not, sensei. But Naruto calls out people as he sees them. Jiraiya rolled his eyes to his greatest student and turned back to Naruto. I don't know what your father has told you, but I am a great and brave shinobi who taught your father everything, a small cough came from besides Naruto, almost everything he knows. And to have you know, I am not a pervert. He suddenly looked both ways and gave him a very perverted grin. I'm a super pervert. Naruto glared at the old man and smirked. A super pervert, eh? Then you will be super affected by my anti-pervert jutsu. As Naruto brought his hands together, Minato looked on in interest. He hadn't heard about his son having an anti-pervert jutsu and was actually proud. His son respected women and would not follow in the footsteps of his father's sensei, a lecherous perv. Bark no jutsu. A puff of smoke came into existence and, as it dispersed, a transformed Naruto came into existence. Naruko, Naruto's name for his sexy female version, stood tall with blonde pigtails and a busty body, large perky breasts and swaying wide hips. The only thing that hid them was the strategic smoke clouds around them, but the shadows told the story. Bonato face vaulted, crying silently about his son's technique and that he was in fact a pervert. He said it was anti-pervert, but only a pervert would use a transformation of a naked woman as a technique. Gureya had not expected such a beauty, a naked one at that, to suddenly appear, so he fell prey to the jutsu and shot across the room and out the door, a blood trail following his projectory. The Naruko in front of both smirked. You aren't so strong if this beat you so easily. Naruko then poofed out of existence, and the sweaty Naruto in orange gym shorts and a white undershirt came back into existence. He began to laugh at the fallen Sanin when a bop in the head came from behind. Turning around, rubbing the spot, he saw an annoyed look on his father. What? He expertly gave his father the puppy eye jutsu, one he had been quick to form since his father came back into his life. Minato sighed, still under prey to that jutsu. Just wake up my sensei and go out front and relax. We have important matters to discuss. Naruto nodded to demanded and went to wake up Jiraiya. He shook him up, laughing at the stupid grin on his face. Jiraiya sat up and, with his job done, Naruto left to relax in the front yard. Minato and Kishina had chosen a house that had little in the back but a big front yard. The thinking behind this was that they had nothing to hide and they wanted to be able to see any enemies that came to them, as the other three sides of the two-story four-bedroom house had strong protective seals guarding them from enemy attacks from the forest. Jiraiya closed the door behind him and looked towards his student, tears in his eyes. Didn't think you would wake up, you know that gaki. He smiled at him, showing how he cared. Minato only shrugged. You should know better than anyone then not to underestimate me, sensei. Jiraiya nodded. True, but to survive having your soul ripped out. You'd have to be inhuman to survive it. Minato frowned at the choice of words and Jiraiya caught it almost immediately. I mean, I didn't mean it like that. I'm not saying Minato cut him off. I know what you meant and I understand. The Kyubi's power what I have left of it gives me advantages over a normal person. Healing, stamina, power. All things that will help me on my road to recovery. Of that, I am thankful for it. Gureya nodded knowingly. It will allow you to gain strength quickly, though you will almost never be at the same levels you once were. Minato sighed and nodded to the statement. True, but there are other ways to grow strong. I will still have seals and I can still try to complete the Rasengan. And, in time, I will take you up on the offer you made me before the war. Gureya perked his head up. Becoming a sage. Really? Minato nodded. I will need every ounce of power possible to deal with the threats that still face us. Like Akatsuki and Madara Cha. 
Gureya grunted. I still need a lead into Akatsuki. Despite being able to be focused on it when Arachimaru joined, I couldn't find a way in. Minato kept quiet on the possibility to using Itachi, as Saratobi explained that it had to be kept a secret from all, that Itachi could not be questioned as the villain, or else they would lose everything. Don't worry, we will find out what they want and stop them. Minato tried to keep it upbeat. His sensei acknowledged his effort and gave a weak smile. Letting out a big sigh, then, Jiraiya took a seat on the bench in the room. Minato decided to sit next to him, waiting for Jiraiya to ask him. So, I heard about how you are treating Kakashi. Jiraiya began, looking to his student. And? He asked quite simply. Why haven't you yelled at me, then? I am his godfather, I should have been there for him. Jiraiya put the issue out on the table, making Minato explain. For one, I really didn't expect you to raise him if we died early. I told Kakashi to do so if the event arose. Secondly, no offense to you, I wouldn't want a pervert such as yourself to raise my son. I wouldn't want him to pick up your bad habits, something that has seemingly failed, as you see with that jutsu he used on you. Hiraya let himself chuckle a bit. True, but that was a mighty fine jutsu he used though. A grin spread across his face. Minato shook his head at the sensei's antics. Finally, you have shown to me regret. You are saying that you are wrong and know you should have done more. And from what I've seen, Kakashi doesn't realize this. He thinks the little he did do that anyone could have done was enough for him to do. He doesn't regret he didn't do more. Until he tells me that he failed to do the best he could have done with my son, I am going to leave Kakashi out of my new life. Ureya understood what Minato was getting at and knew that it was a very Minato-ish way of dealing with things. Soon, the discussion went to Jureya's travels and the success of his books. Minato frowned upon hearing the nature of them. We told you that your first book had been great. Did you really have to switch to smut writing? Ureya frowned. Hey, it is still quality writing. I just sex it up. I know you will love it. Minato grimaced at the comment. I'll pass, thank you very much. But when you write your next normal book, I'll be the first to read it. Deciding this was the perfect segue, Jiraiya said. Maybe, but I still make millions on royalties. But I need all that money for my spy network. And since I am going to be staying in Kanoha more often to see you and your brat, I don't want to have to pay for a hotel every time. And this house does have two extra bedrooms. Minato shook his head and smiled. Sure, sensei. It would be a waste of space otherwise, and it would be rude to force you to find a room elsewhere when you are here visiting us. Jiraiya grinned, but then there was a knock on the door. Naruto. Minato asked. Uh, yeah. Hinata and her dad are here too, to see you. Minato was surprised. How did Hiashi enter through the protection seal he had left? He knew that Tsum and Hiashi knew that he was alive and about, but not where he lived. It was hardwired to the warm blood of a few people he trusted, someone Hiashi was not one of. Sure, son, come in. Naruto opened the door, letting Hinata come in, wearing a proper deep purple kimono with Hiashi and a pristine white kimono following behind them, head up high. Minato and Jiraiya stood up. Hello, Hiyashi-san. Hinata-san. Minato politely greeted them, while Jiraiya gave a simple nod for his greeting. Minato-sama. Jiraiya-sama. It is good to see you both. I have come here to talk with you on something important. And Hinata, she came here to check on your well-being. Hiyashi told Minato properly. Minato nodded. I understand. Looking down to Hinata, he gave her a small smile. And thank you for your concern, Hinata-san. I am doing very well. Turning back to Jiraiya, Minato said. Please, watch over Naruto and Hinata-san. Hiashi and I have much to discuss. Jiraiya nodded in acceptance of his duties, as Hiashi and Minato left the room to Minato's small office he had built, the proper location for official discussions. Jiraiya looked at the two 11-year-olds he had been charged to watch and saw the glances each were giving one another. From the perspective of an 11-year-old, Jiraiya understood. The Hayuga girl was no doubt cute, especially in the kimono, and his words earlier about girls had no doubt stayed in Naruto's head. Reversely, Naruto was a very fit preteen whose sweaty undershirt failed to hide a set of abs Jiraiya was jealous of in his 50 years of age. Both were checking the other out, giving Jiraiya the idea for the plot of his newest story. Two kids, always attracted to one another since a young age, fight through the difficulties of the world to eventually get married and have the wedding night of the century. Jiraiya liked the idea of the story. ayuga san just because my godson is glistening doesn't mean you to get to gawk. And Gaki, just because she is in a kimono and you think she is cute, doesn't mean you get to drill. The two 11-year-old blush a storm at the old man's accusations, secretly wondering if the other was checking them out. Hinata was both receptive and scared of the concept, while Naruto was surprised and embarrassed at the idea of a girl checking him out. When he had been thinking on Jiraiya's words, he had thoughts of the pink-haired Sakura from his class, but now that Hinata was in the mix, he was flustered. Hinato and Hiashi were now in the office, talking about important matters. How did you manage to slip past my seal? 
Minato bluntly asked, curious to how Hiashi broke out. I did not slip past it, I simply used it. His ashes and my blood is the same, a seal for one will activate for the other. Minato, realizing the truth in that statement, nodded in understanding. An embarrassment slipped by him, but something he could learn from. So, I presume you wish to talk about Niji. Yes. I would like for you to invoke your right as godfather and task custody of Niji. Minato was stunned by the statement. He had never thought that Hiashi would advocate such an act. He would have sworn he would have wanted to keep Niji to the Hyuga clan. So, hesitantly, Minato tried to discover why Hiashi proposed this. I don't agree with that idea, Hiashi. He has lived with your clan for his entire life and is meant to be your daughter's protector. Hiashi let out a sigh. That may be true, but I believe it would be for the best. He has become obsessed with the idea of fate and has grown to hate the main branch family. Regardless of your opinion of the split of the households, having one who hates the other is not good for the future of the clan. Especially one as talented as Niji. Talented? How so? So talented the elders have discussed commissioning our seal masters to find a way to remove the seal and make him a part of main branch and heir. What of your daughter? Does she not deserve to be heiress? Minato asked. The ashy narrowed his eyes. My eldest daughter Hinata is too weak, much too weak to think of leading the Hyuga clan. She lacks the will of the Hyuga. Minato frowned at the idea. His ashy often said the elders thought the same of your wife. The ashy flirted his nostrils at the insult, but made no other facial expression. Well it was said she was too gentle, she was as strong as any other Hyuga. Hinata, however, falls to her sister over four years younger than her. Minato's eyebrows furrowed at the comment, no matter how damning it was. He decided he was going to fix that, since it was obvious the Hyuga family had lost faith in her and made her lose faith in itself. Still, do you not want Niji to be a part of your clan if elders want him to become heir? The Ashi was silent for a moment before he confessed. There is also a movement among the main branch to find an offense that Niji may commit and use the seal mercilessly against him until he may accidentally die. I don't know names, but it is there. Minato nodded. Jealousy, then. So this is more to protect him. To protect my brother's son. Of course. I owe my brother too much, his sacrifice will not be forgotten. Minato assumed he Ashi didn't know that he knew the truth behind his Ashi's death and he did nothing to dissuade. But how would your clan feel if I take custody of Niji? What do you think? The Yandame himself taking custody of his godchild, the Hyuga prodigy. Even the dissenters would be in awe of such an act. Minato silently contemplated the idea. Coming to a conclusion, he nodded. At least not for a month, but afterwards, yes. I still must spend time with my son, time that I have lost, and grow strong for Kanoha. Perhaps, after the Genin exams, I should take custody of him. The Ashi, thinking about the proposed solution, eventually nodded. I agree with that. I will make sure to protect him until then. He held his hand out. Minato nodded. Thank you, he Ashi san Minato shook his hand. And now the man who had lost 11 years had gained two sons. I can't believe how much stronger you have gotten in the last few days, dad. You can almost do as many push-ups as I can. Naruto was trying to catch his breath after his and his father's latest round of exercises. It was only a week ago Minato woke up from his coma, but now his father was growing stronger all the time. Minato gave a smile and rustled his son's head. Well, to tell you the truth, it wasn't all me. Naruto looked confused. What do you mean? It was obvious to Naruto that it was his father doing the push-ups, so what did he mean by that? Ureya stood up from his seat, having been supervising the workout for Minato's sake. He was using his chakra to reinforce his muscles, allowing him to last longer with each of his exercises. It is an advanced technique, one that is not commonly used in the field unless it is an emergency. However, I never thought to use it for muscle training, but it obviously a good idea. No matter how your muscles are being fueled to exercise, they build up when they are. Minato nodded. I thought of it a few days ago when I wanted to get used to using my chakra again. Most jutsu would be too dangerous, but something like this is pretty much risk-free. Naruto was intrigued by this. Could I maybe try this, dad? It sounds really cool. Both Minato and Jureya shook their heads. Minato explained. It is a difficult task to learn in the first place, and you have no need to do so. I'm only using it to bring me back into shape, since it is such an exhaustive technique long term. Naruto frowned. That sucks. Well, what are we gonna do next? Minato turned to Jureya. I think my chakra stores are exercised enough for me to attempt a few basic jutsus. But I want you around, in case something happens. Alright, sensei. Jiraiya nodded, so Minato turned to Naruto. You don't mind, do you Naruto? Naruto shook his head. Of course not. It would be cool to see you do some jutsus. Are you going to summon frogs? Or maybe use the Rasengan? Or even the Horatian no jutsu? Minato shook his head, but paused. Well, at least not the first two. 
It actually shouldn't be too hard for me to do the Horatian no Jutsu, it doesn't use much chakra. But I meant the basic three. You know, Henge, Kamiri, and Bunshin. Naruto understood, so he gave his father some space to cast his Jutsus. Minato took a breath as he made the hand sign for his first Jutsu, concentrating on a certain form. Henge no Jutsu. A puff of smoke popped up, and a version of Jiraiya suddenly appeared. Except that his nose was much bigger than normal, and a little bit squashed. Minato looked at himself and frowned, releasing the jutsu. He looked up to his sensei. It looks like my control is still shot. MHMM, where is a piece of paper? He asked aloud, looking towards his sensei. Jiraiya grabbed his notebook and flipped it midway through. He grabbed his pen and handed it out. Here's some paper and a pencil, but I don't get why you need it. Wordlessly, Minato took the notebook from his sensei's hand and ripped out a piece of paper. He proceeded to give it back to his sensei. Then, ripping a piece off of the paper, he put it onto his forehead, he leaned back slightly, but Naruto was sure that the paper should have still fallen off. How the heck is that sticking to your head? Naruto asked. Minato was surprised, causing the paper to fall off. He caught it before it hit the ground as he turned to his son. Are you saying your academy sensei never had you use leaf concentration practice? Minato had heard many stories about the academy already from his son and was actually disappointed in how much easier it had become. But he thought for sure that would have still been taught. Naruto took a second to think until a light bulb popped up over his head. Oh, I think that was the thing Aruka sensei wanted me and the guys to do a few times, but we all ended up um, we all had to leave before we could do it. He remembered his dad didn't like that he skipped classes and wetnet, so he didn't want to make him more angry. Minato sighed, knowing what Naruto had been hinting at, but he let it pass. He quickly ripped another portion of the paper off and handed it to Naruto. Do you remember what your sensei told you to do for the practice? Naruto took another moment to think and hesitantly nodded. Yeah, he said we had to use our chakra to keep the leaf to our forehead, and if we didn't concentrate on it, the leaf would fall off. Minato sighed. It's good to know you at least listened. Well, do that, but only with this paper. Do you understand? Naruto let out a small frown. But why do I need to do that? Hiraya rolled his eyes and answered. It helps with chakra control, something that I have heard you were miserable at. So put the paper on your forehead and concentrate, like your dad. Naruto looked over to his father and watched as his father kept the paper stuck to his forehead, it being clear he was concentrating on getting the task done. Naruto decided to follow suit as he put the paper on his head, throwing himself into the task at hand. After a long day of re-establishing his chakra control and re-familiarizing himself with his basic jutsus, Minato Namaka sat alone in his master bedroom, staring at an old picture. He never noticed Jiraiya standing in the doorway until he cleared his throat. Minato. Minato realized his sensei was there and let the picture drop to his lap. He looked up at his sensei. Yeah, sensei. Jiraiya casually walked into the room, his face focused on the picture in his lap. Saratobi sensei spoke with the Jonin council today. They have been made aware of your survival and Naruto's heritage. He knew his sensei was focused on the picture he was holding, so he casually covered it with one hand. I'm surprised it took him so long. What did they think? Hiraya let out a chuckle. Well, there were quite a few who were pissed that they were left out of the loop. Most are happy that you are back and are wondering you are going to become Hokage again, no. What? Jiraiya was surprised by his student's bluntness. I'm not going to take up that hat again unless I absolutely have to. I don't regret anything I did last time, but my son was left alone for 11 years. I don't want that to happen again. I actually want to be there for him and help him become Hokage someday. I can't do that if I'm stuck in the office all day. What about being a day-to-day -day shinobi? You're retiring from that too. Jiraiya accidentally made it sound accusatory, even though it was an innocent. Minato misunderstood. Of course not, but what if I did? I should be able to retire if I want to, the clan heads have pretty much retired, why can't I? Jiraiya backed off. I didn't mean it like that, kid, I just was asking. Though I'm not surprised you want to stay in the forces. I never thought of you as the kind to sit around all day. That was probably your least favorite part of being the Hokage, wasn't it? Minato calmed down, knowing he didn't mean to offend him. Yeah, definitely. I just wanted to be out there, doing missions for the good of the village. There was a silence between them, before Jiraiya told him, your son will probably be treated like royalty when the village finds out, by the way, if I can predict by how most of the Jonin council looked after Sensei told them. Minato at first smiled and then frowned. I just hope that doesn't go to his head too much. Jiraiya smiled and lightly punched him in the shoulder. I don't think you have to worry about that, as long as you are around to ground him. Minato nodded solemnly. He looked down at the picture in his lap, something Jiraiya noticed. Jiraiya made a slow grab for the picture, but Minato stopped him from taking it. Oh, is it something private? Something steamy from Kishina? Jiraiya gave a lecherous grin at the thought. Minato shook his head. 
No, it's it's just an old photo. He looked at it for a moment before handing it over to his sensei. Jiraiya looked over the old photo, recognizing this was picture of when Minato was a chunin, about 15, after he had saved Kashina. He stood in the middle of the portrait, his arms around the waist of two women that were most important in his life. On his right stood Kashina, her long red hair almost obscuring half of his body with her head resting on his shoulder. She wore a dark green dress with a white shirt on, something that Jiraiya looked good on her. On his left was his mother, someone Jiraiya hadn't thought of in 15 years. Besides her hairstyle, a short shoulder height bob cut, Minato was almost a spitting image of him. She was in her late thirties, but looked older. Remembering how sick she was, Jiraiya frowned. If Minato was 15, then that would be around the time. That was my last photo with my mom. Jiraiya looked up to his student, a few tears in his eyes. You remember how sick she was, but she was so happy when I let Kashina meet her. I remember her telling me that we were destined to get married and make beautiful babies. We were so embarrassed she said that, but it is so true in the end. I just wish she was around for our wedding and for Naruto's birth. I think it's kind of funny how it turned out. I had no dad and Naruto will have no mom. I just hope I can be as good a parent to him as my mom was to me. Gureya gave him back the photo and put a hand on his shoulder. Don't worry, kid, you will be a great parent. You are a great parent already, I can tell in his eyes that he is so happy you are here and how much he wants to spend time with you. Minato took a look at his photo and then to his sensei. You think so, sensei? Gureya nodded. Of course. Now, I'm not going to be in until late and I maybe bring some company. Do you mind? The innocent tone that he used told Minato what he meant. He let out a huge sigh. I'm not having my son wake up to find his godfather half-naked with a couple other naked girls. It was bad enough that it happened to me. Twice. Gureya faked huff. Fine then, I'll rent a hotel. Can I borrow some money? Minato shot a look as if to say are you serious? Getting the message, Gureya threw his hands up as he left the room. Minato let out a great sigh again, letting his gaze fall onto the photo. He wasn't honestly sure if he could be half the parent his mother was to him, but he knew beyond a fact he would be better than his father ever was to him. And again, all he had to do was talk to his son before he became a jonin. Minato wasn't sure why he ended up being angry at all the one-eyed men he met, he really wasn't. The next afternoon, the streets around the Hokage's tower were filled to the brim with Kanoha citizens and shinobi, all there by order of the Sandame Hokage. Everyone had been instructed to come, so almost all did. The only reason for such an announcement was that it was a very important one. They even ignored the presence of the village pariah Naruto Uzumaki, standing in the middle. The cloaked figure stood near him, someone that attracted the curiosity of a few of the surrounding people, but no one made a comment towards him. The streets filled as 2pm drew near, whispers all around of what they could possibly be announced. Many people feared that the Hokage was announcing a war, even though they all knew that he was a more pacifist leader. Others wondered that he was announcing his retirement as the man was into his late 60s and had already retired once. The question among those groups then became who would become the next Hokage. Naruto was on edge, however. He knew what was going on and couldn't wait for the big reveal. He and his father had been training all day to make sure their plan went as expected, one that he thought was awesome. As he looked around at all the people, he ignored the few that gave him stares and wanted to see if he knew anybody. He saw Kiba a few rows up and a dozen or so feet to his right, so he gave him a wave. Kiba nodded back, and Akamaru, on his shoulder, gave him a greeting bark back. Naruto kept looking and but couldn't see over most of the rest of the villagers. So instead, he let his gaze focus onto the cloaked figure next to him, and he couldn't help but smirk. He couldn't wait for the cloak to come off. Akashi, for once, was not late and was in fact on a rooftop, waiting for the news. He was curious about how people would react and how his sensei would treat all of them. He hoped, in a shallow sense, that he would give them the same level of dismissal as he had gotten. He had asked the Sandame to act as a liaison between the two, but nothing had come from those efforts, leading him to think the Sandame had taken his sensei's side. His mind in a contemplative move, he didn't notice her until she had her fingers on the mask. He slapped her away before she could pull it down and looked at the trench coat Kinoichi. Oh, hello Enko-san. Enko gave him a smirk back. Hey there, Scarecrow. I'm surprised you aren't up in the tower right now. Akashi raised his visible eyebrow. What do you mean? She rolled her eyes. Well, according to most rumors, you are being announced as the godim today. But since you are sitting here, I'm guessing it isn't as anything as fantastic as that. Akashi shook his head. No, it is definitely fantastic, but it isn't that. You know. Anko grabbed both sides of his vest. How do you know? What is this announcement about? Akashi turned his eye to the Hokage Tower. He pointed towards it as he told the energetic snake lady of Kanoha, why don't you listen for yourself? Anko turned her head to see the Hokage step into view onto his balcony. 
Citizens of Kanahagakur, I have gathered you here to make a grand announcement to the future of Kanoha. However, it first be mentioned that this announcement comes with a confession. Over 11 years ago, I told you that Minato Namikas, our illustrious Yandame Hokage, gave his life to defeat the Kaiubi. This was a lie. Word spread quickly, and many eyes went towards Naruto, as they made the connection that he was involved with his actual death. However, people were surprised by the Hokage's next statement. Instead, he went into a deep coma that I feared he would never wake up from. However, one week ago, he woke up from this coma and has spent the last week recovering from his time in the coma. Soon, Naruto was forgotten. Many people asked where he was now, while others, the bolder ones, claimed the Hokage was lying and that there was no way the Yandame could still be alive. If you wish to see proof of the Yandame's survival, I will give it to you. From his sleeve, he pulled a kunai that everyone immediately knew, the famous three-pronged kunai that the Yandame used for his Horatian no Jutsu. At that moment, the cloaked figure next to Naruto dropped his cloak, revealing all to those who noticed that it was Minato Namikas. Then, he grabbed Naruto by the waist as he prepared to make the leap. He focused his chakra to the special seal tattoo he had made to activate his Jutsu of Legend and knew when the Sandame dropped his kunai. Then, in the yellow flash that gave him his name, he teleported himself and his son to the balcony. The collective gasp of everyone in the crowd was deafening. Turning to the crowd, Minato bellowed to the crowd. Hello, citizens of Konoha. It is good to see that my sacrifice was not all for naught. It is good to see the health of the village that I love and of the health of my son Naruto. He patted Naruto on the shoulder to show him he meant, as if the name Naruto was not rare enough. Naruto did not know the atmosphere could actually contain that much dread. His father continued. I am sorry that I have not been here for the last 11 years, but I promise to do all that I will for Konoha in the future. May Konoha prosper. He ended his mini-speech, not wanting to go into a long speech on his first appearance, with total silence. No one knew if they should cheer or, in Minato's mind, crap their pants. A ghost, more or less, came back and greeted them all and revealed that Naruto was his son. They were still stunned. Minato led his son off the balcony as Minato wanted to relax. There would be a lot of more individual conversations in the future with the citizens of Konoha, but now he wanted to enjoy the rest of the day with his son. Minato Namikaze is not a man to be angered easily. And even if you did anger him, he was not one to yell. To raise his voice, like he did with Kakashi, yes. But to yell. He only yelled once in his life at a man who did the unforgivable in his eyes. So how did he express his anger at people? So, Naruto, what do you think about this store for my new clothes? Minato walked openly in town with his son by his side. They were currently shopping, updating wardrobes and the like. The owner of said store was looking out the front of his little shop, on edge. Naruto shook his head. No, this place is way too expensive. This place charges like 200 yen for a white shirt. This comment was heard by all the spectators, and the shopkeeper winced. His past policies, before he knew, were coming to bite him in the ass. Minato shot a glare at the store clerk. You're right, son. Any place that would charge almost triple for a normal shirt is some place where the owner should be ashamed of themselves. Though Naruto didn't understand the subtext behind it, the owner saw it for what it was. The most polite and subtle FKU he had ever received. He wasn't the only person to have gotten this response from the Yandame. He wasn't the only one that would be getting a sharp drop of business either. Minato didn't spare another glance at the store as he took his son to the next place of judgment. It wasn't really fair to use his son like this as the barometer of a person's sins, but that is what they earned by his poor treatment of them. He walked to the next clothing store, pointing to it as they came close. What about there, Naruto? Do you know if it has good clothes? Naruto blushed. Um dad, that's a store for girls. Minato's eyes went wide as he came closer to the store. It was obvious just by looking and it was just that, a store for women. Minato let out a cough. Um, well, I didn't realize that I thought who's up for Ichikaru's. Naruto jumped up excitedly. Seriously? I would love some. Minato grinned. Alrighty then. I haven't seen Tucci since I woke up. I wonder how he is doing. It was true. It was only two days ago that the revelation had come to the general population and he hadn't gotten to eat a Kashina's in his son's favorite restaurant. The first day had come to cheers of the general population, but they soon realized that he wasn't happy. Oh, he smiled and acknowledged everyone, but they could tell, Minato made it obvious that he wasn't happy. Comments to a few shinobi who made Naruto flinch just by seeing them, they were the ones who called him the worst names, made sure to everyone this was the case. The ones who hurt his son would not go unpunished. However, Minato knew he wouldn't have to do it at Chikaru's. In fact, by how much his son praised them, he probably needed to thank them in a big way. Minato found himself in front of the Raymond stand, Naruto having already jumped into an open seat. He heard him loudly order for a bowl of pork miso as he went under the flap. Tucci looked up, saw him, and then bowed deeply. Yo Yandame-sama. 
What an honor to have you eat at our establishment. Minato waved him off. Tuchi-san, I ate here the day you opened. Do you remember that? Minato began to tap his chin. If I remember right, I actually came in here to do some Kashina watching, and you had me order. I ended up getting two bowls of shrimp ramen. Kashina watching? You watched my mom? Minato let out a bit of a nervous chuckle. Did I say that out loud? It is just that I liked her back then, but I wasn't sure how to approach her yet, it is quite common actually. People who like other people tend to watch them, especially if they are shy. Naruto's eyes went wide in understanding. Really? So if I like a girl, I should watch her? Minato sighed. No, I mean that, some people who are more shy will do that. I don't think you will have any problems with that. Naruto nodded to that. He had been thinking about asking out Sakura before all of this happened, he wasn't afraid of getting rejected. However, he also had seen Hinata was actually really cute and nice, so now he wasn't 100% sure if he wanted to ask out Sakura. Yeah, I probably won't dad. Minato ordered his bowl of shrimp and caught up with Tucci and AM, only a little girl when he had last seen her. It took a bit longer than normal as the stools surrounding the yandane were filled and orders made. Despite his hostility to those who treated his son poorly, he still had fans and the such. In fact, Naruto recognized one of the people next to him. Mizuki-sensei. I didn't know you liked Raymond. The white-haired man gave a nervous grin at the boy. Ah, yes, well, I felt a little peckish for it. Minato studied the sensei of his son carefully. Mizuki I remember you. When I visited the academy, you were the one to swear to become the strongest ninja ever. I never thought of you as an academy sensei, though. The man shrugged as he took a sip from his glass of water. Well, things changed. It was obvious he was nervous, but Naruto thought highly of him. Minato figured he was one of the silent haters, those who hated but never said anything about it. He would keep an eye on him for sure. So, what do you teach my son in school? Mizuki scratched the back of his neck. Well, um, not much really. I just help Aruka-san in class, and with weapons. Minato nodded to this. Well, I bet you are a fine teacher in weapons. Mizuki let himself laugh a little. Well, thank you, Yandame-sama. Mizuki took a long sip from his water afterwards, unsure of what to say next. Minato took the prerogative. I would also like to apologize. Naruto hasn't been coming to the academy for the last week and a half, and that is my fault. Mizuki immediately shook his head. No, no, Yandame-sama. There is nothing wrong with that. If anything, it might be better for Naruto-sen here. I mean, training with you. I mean, he probably won't ever have to come back. He can just learn from you. Minato frowned at the comment and shook his head. Nonsense. I went to the academy, and I had a great education. I will of course help him grow stronger, but I see no reason to take him from such an opportunity. Mizuki simply nodded. Oh of course, Yandame-sama. The conversation ended there as all of their bowls of ramen were served. They each ate their bowls, and Naruto ordered a second bowl fairly quickly. The second one finished was Mizuki, who then brought attention to AM who took his money. He quickly said good day to both of them, and left in a hurry. Minato finished his last bit of ramen as he watched the man leave. He definitely did not trust him. Naruto felt very awkward as he made his way to the academy. Not only was he wearing a somewhat new outfit, a black t-shirt with a Uzumaki swirl, proudly ordained on his back along with his normal orange pants, but he was also being watched. And it was a different type of watching. He hadn't noticed it over the last few days, since he had been basking in the aura that was his father, but since he was alone, he felt it. It was tough for Naruto to understand why they were watching at first, but as he passed by the faces on the street, realization hit him. They were in awe. It was odd for Naruto, but they were in the awe of the shock and awe. Just seeing him made those face contemplate past feelings and handle with the reflections of the truth. The once demon was actually the chosen son. Even the haters, who still did not trust Naruto and thought the fourth Hokage overestimated his own sealing abilities, were still in awe. Naruto wasn't really sure what to think. So he just hurried to his class, wanting to see Aruka-sensei again. He walked into the classroom and immediately waved to Aruka at the front of the classroom. Hey, Aruka-sensei. Aruka looked up and saw Naruto. He smiled to the boy, legitimately happy for him and unsure of what to think of the current situation. It wasn't every day one of your students was suddenly revealed to be the son of Konoha's greatest hero. He wasn't the only person to look up, however. The whole class turned to look up at Naruto. Naruto immediately felt uncomfortable. Nervously, he waved to everyone. Um, hi. The guys seemed to be studying him, but the girls seemed to be judging him. There were nine girls in the class, and Naruto wasn't sure what they were thinking. Except for Hinata, since she didn't really judge people. She had visited again the day after his father revealed himself, after they got back from shopping, and they hanged out for a couple of hours, even being used as an impromptu tojutsu partner, as his father tried to correct the forms Naruto blindly used. 
Suddenly, three girls, including Ino, moved their way towards him. Naruto really wasn't sure what to do. Ino was the first to reach him. Why don't you sit next to me, Naruto-kun? She asked sweetly. The other girls asked the same thing as they led him down too near where they were. He didn't like where this was going. They looked at him like how they looked at Sasuke. He didn't trust this, but wasn't sure how to stop it. His words weren't exactly helping. You don't, I mean, I just want to sit, could you stop pulling me? Ino just looked back at him and pouted. The pout was compounded by the two girls beside. We just want you to sit next to us, Naruto-kun. Naruto really wasn't sure how to defend himself. Kiba was laughing at how Naruto was suddenly being treated, Hinata was terrified at the concept of Naruto getting fangirls who would be all over him and not looking in other quieter directions. Sakura was confused that Ino was suddenly a Naruto fangirl. Okay, yeah, it turns out he had a super famous dad, but he was still dumb and bright, color-wise, and loud. Sasuke-kun was so much cooler, in her mind. Hiruka pitied his favorite student at the moment, as it appeared the horror of fangirldom, a topic he had actually discussed with Sasuke once, had befell him. Sasuke pitied him. Due to his heritage, Sasuke decided to give Naruto a break. He wasn't some clanless idiot, he was the Hokage's son of an idiot who would be learning from the best from now on. He might turn into a challenge, he had thought amongst himself. And right now he was in the evil clutches of fangirls, a miserable fate indeed. Sasuke thought about helping, but shook his head. He would challenge Naruto to a spar later though, see if his time with his father improved him. He buried any other feelings besides the business-like approach to this scenario, such as jealous and a feeling that the world was unjust. Naruto ended up in a triangle of girl. Ino was on his right to prevent escape, and the girls on his left and behind him. You know, Naruto-kun, I never knew how cute you were. Naruto rolled his eyes what the heck was with Ino. I didn't realize how sexy whiskers could be. I like your messy hair. Naruto was not used to this sort of positive female attention, so he did something he never thought he would ever do. He focused on Aruka as he began class, trying to ignore the eyes and smiles of his sudden fans. Aruka was surprised at the attention he was getting from the blonde, but he would take it. He just hoped his fans wouldn't forget about their own education. Sasuke looked approvingly from next to the girl behind Naruto. He was learning quickly. Minato calmed himself down as he had the rubber ball in his hand. After 11 years, he had to reteach his body to do the Rasengan. The first had taken only minutes, it wasn't that hard once you knew what to do. This step though, this took him over a year to finish when he built it the first time. He began with the same power levels that popped the balloon and let his power grow. The ball began to deform, but Minato couldn't hold out, forcing the chakra in his hand to build down. He looked down at the ball, frowning. Jiraiya just patted his on the back. Come on, kid. You have only been working at it for two hours. It took me two months to do, and I knew how you did it, too. Minato only nodded. Hi, sensei. That is true. He let out a breathe. I think I'm gonna take a break for a second with this. He paused for a moment and turned to his sensei. Will I have to resign the toad scroll, or am I still an eligible summoner? Gureya let out a small smile. Don't worry, you are still on there. To be honest, I used to watch it all the time. That way, if your name faded Gureya drifted off. Bonato understood. Maybe I should try to summon one of them. Give them the news that I'm back. I bet Gamabunta Sama would be happy to hear that. Gureya nodded. He has asked me for updates in the past, though not any recently. Boy will he be surprised. Bonato nodded as he bit his thumb. Let's see what happens. He made the hand signs and struck the ground. Kuchiya no jutsu. A puff of smoke popped up and a red toad appeared. He had pointy purple markings and a pair of goggles around his neck. Kasukir. He saluted immediately, happy he was going to be getting his first messaging job from the legendary Toad Sage. He looked up and saw the Toad Sage, as described by his instructors at Mount Mayaboku, but noticed someone else, the one who actually had blood on his hand. Minato nodded. Hello there, Kasuk. My name is Minato Namikas. Kasuk immediately dropped his toad jaw. The great Minato, the one the boss let ride him in a fight against Akai Ubi, was in front of him. Everyone knew the story, and many had assumed the man had died. But here he was. He began to bow. Minato-sama, what an honor. Minato modestly shook his head. It's alright, Kasuk. I see you are wearing a pair of goggles. Does that mean you are a part of the messenger toads? The eager young toad nodded. H hi. Minato just smiled. Good, I need a messenger. Can you give Gamabunta-sama a message for me? The toad nodded. Though Minato could not possibly know this, in Iowa, a rare earthquake hit, one powerful enough for the ground to visibly shake. In Kumo, the Reikage had a cold chill run down his spine as he dropped a saucer of sake, the glass breaking on the table. And in a little cave in a Megakur, a man masked in orange paused for a second, for no good reason. Tell him Minato Namakas is back. 
The punch was wild over Sasuke's head, leaving the ribs to be seemingly exposed. However, as Sasuke went to take advantage and finish the spar with a body blow, his fist was blocked by Naruto's right arm, just above the elbow, having been pendulum to protect the opening exposed as the right missed. Then, with the rest of his right arm, he knocked away the arm. With his left, Naruto tried to take the opening, but was stopped by his hand being caught by Sasuke's right. He tried to pull away, but Sasuke's grip was firm, so Naruto tried to boot him into the midsection. However, he was caught by Sasuke's left hand. Then, in an impressive bout of strength, Sasuke suplexed Naruto as best as he could from that position, leaving Naruto temporarily breathless. In that moment, Sasuke rolled through onto Naruto's chest and put a hand around Naruto's neck. He ignored the gasps from the fangirl spectators, like he normally did. How they found about his challenge to Naruto was beyond him, but they were there, and they had cheered for sides. And the side for Naruto was in despair. I win. Naruto tried to claw his way out of the choke, but Sasuke kept firm until Naruto gave up. He let up the pressure before he accidentally killed him or something like that. Naruto immediately began to message his neck. I can't believe you beat me again. What is that, the fourth time in the last three weeks? He looked up to Sasuke, who was offering a hand. No longer surprised by this kind gesture coming from him, he took it, standing up. Sasuke simply nodded. Yes it is. He took a look to the left and let out a sigh. Rampaging fangirls, left. Then, without another word, Sasuke was running as fast as he could. As soon as those words were processed by Naruto, he was off to the races too. Naruto had learned about the evils that was fangirls from hanging out with Sasuke a surprising amount. His father had told him his mother and Sasuke's mom wanted them to be friends, but he didn't expect it would come so easily. But they were able to bond over the evils of fangirls, fangirls who tried to kiss you and always bothered you. Naruto regretted ever wishing he had some, as the seven he had at the moment, both civilians and academy students around his age, pestered him in everyday life. None did more so than Ino Yamanaka. And the fact she had turned fangirl so quickly made him more cautious. She said it was because he hadn't been well liked by her mother and thus never an option, but Naruto didn't buy it. So. Right behind Sasuke, he ran. They were quickly out of the training grounds and huffing their way through the streets of Konoha. The civilian fangirls had dropped out of the race, but still nearly a dozen remained. Sasuke and Naruto could clearly hear two of them. Naruto-kun, I just want to give you a massage. Your neck must be sore. Sasuke-kun, I only want to give you a congratulatory kiss. Naruto and Sasuke were now focused on evading them, and Naruto had a plan. He saw the tall building with the alley next to it coming up in front of them and decided to put his plan into action. Boy, Sasuke, turn into this alley and stop. Naruto commanded the Achiha. Deciding that Naruto must have a plan to escape, the one thing Sasuke admitted he could do better than him, he followed his advice. The band of fangirls were quick to turn into the alley and run full force down it, certain that their idols had turned down this corridor. They rushed to the other opening of the alley, hoping for a glance of where they had gone. Sakura heard a noise behind them suddenly and turned to see an amazing sight. Naruto was piggybacking Sasuke as he back flipped off of the wall of the building they were next to, coolly landing on his feet. Sasuke kun. The band of fangirls immediately turned their heads and rushed at the duo, now leaving the alley. Oh, you jumped down too early. If you had waited 10 more seconds Sasuke began to yell at him. I couldn't hold it 10 more seconds. My dad only showed me that last week and I had to hold up a certain fat someone. Naruto insulted him back. Sasuke shot a glare and suddenly shoved Naruto into a nearby trash can. Whatever. Stop following me anyway, you are making it too easy for them to track us. Naruto barely heard the end of Sasuke's statement as he ran away. Naruto quickly brushed himself off and made a quick map of where he was and where he could hide. He quickly realized he was a block away from the Hyuga compound and that Hinata would probably hide him. She was the only girl who wasn't fangirly and was pretty cool in general. So, as the horde descended, he quickly bolted for the Hyuga front gate. He was in a dead run, Eno, and the trio of his fangirls still chasing him were on his heels as he went for the compound, the garden site. Naruto could notice the guard roll his eyes at the side as he barreled towards them. He then realized five people were barreling towards his post and made a move to stop them. It was unneeded, however, as Naruto was quickly grabbed by the shirt by his father, who appeared out of nowhere. Ino and the band of fangirls made an immediate stop. Minato looked on the four girls and wished he had a squirt bottle and a rolled up newspaper at the moment so he could train the girls to stop harassing his son. Instead, he let out a mighty sigh. If my son is running from you, you should take the hint. He was pleased to see they at least looked embarrassed. Um, sorry Namika's sama. Oh well, look at my wrist, we have to go. The four girls scattered, not wanting to face off against the legendary shinobi. Said shinobi looked on and shook his head before turning his attention to his son. His son was wearing a grateful face. Thanks, dad. I thought they would never stop jazzing me. 
Naruto told him. Minato just closed his eyes. Did you forget about what we were doing today? Naruto was confused. What? Minato let out a sigh. I told you, at breakfast. To come home immediately so we can prepare to see the Hyuga clan. Naruto pondered for a moment before his eyes went wide. That was today. Sorry, um, Sasuke challenged me to a spar and he has beaten me the last three times, so I needed to beat him this time. I didn't, but I will next time. Minato had a bewildered look at his son logic processes and simply blamed Kashina. He released him from his grasp while telling him to brush off his clothes. They were then escorted to the Hyuga clan home. Naruto looked around in wonder of the awesome home Hinata lived in when a question came to him. Why are we here, dad? Minato let out a sigh and looked towards the guard. Could you give me a minute? The guard's eyes went wide in surprise of the request but simply nodded, giving the former hookage room. Minato then checked around, making sure the coast was relatively clear. Though this wouldn't need to be kept secret for long, he didn't want Niji finding out prematurely. Naruto, there is something I haven't told you about. I was worried. Naruto looked puzzled. What do you mean? I put off telling you this because I wasn't sure if you would like the news. You probably will, but I had my fears. What about though? Naruto was getting edgy, wondering why his father was being so secretive. Minato took a breath before telling Naruto. You see, Hiashi Sama's nephew, Niji, is in actuality my godson. He wants me to take in Niji, as per my duty as godfather. Naruto took a second to react, but he gave a smile. Why would I be mad at that? This means I'm getting a brother, right? Naruto actually sounded excited at the concept. Minato let out a sigh of relief, along with the breath he was still holding. He feared his son would backlash a sudden addition to the family, that he would want to monopolize his limited time with his father, but of course his son would think like this. He should have realized how much Naruto wanted family, and a brother would fit that nicely. He nodded. It's good to hear you are so excited. I was going to tell you this when you came home today, however, Naruto rubbed the back of his neck. Ha ha, sorry about that, but this is so cool. I'm gonna get a brother. What did you say his name was, Niji? Naruto stopped and puckered his lips. Wait, Niji Hayuga. I remember him. He is graduating next week from the academy, I had a class with him when I wanted to. He seems like he has a pole stuck in his butt. Minato simply rolled his eyes, even though it was somewhat true. He had already met Niji once, in the middle of the street, and had gotten the same vibe. He was certain his father's early sacrifice led to this behavior. Do not speak ill of your godbrother like that. Now, please restrain yourself while we are here, as we are informing Niji of this. Do you understand? Naruto nodded to his father's request. Couldn't I just hang out with Hinata-chan or something? Minato shook his head. No, Hiashi-sama requested you be here as well for the meeting, so Niji meets his new family members all at once. But I've already met him Naruto questioned back, but Minato simply led him into the Hyuga compound, letting the guard take back his stance. It was obvious he had heard the conversation, but was considerate enough to act professionally. Minato quietly thanked him as he passed by. Father and son soon found themselves in the modest mansion that was the Hyuga home, standing in front of a door. A call from behind it beckoned them in, as they saw it was the office of the Hyuga leader, who was standing behind his desk. Niji stood to the left of the leader. Both bowed in sync. Namika's Sama. Naruto Sama. Both said in near sync. It is a pleasure to have you here today. Hiashi told the blonde duo. Minato politely bowed back. It is an honor to be invited, Hiashi Sama. It is good to see you Niji. Naruto looked slightly startled, wondering what to do, before he bowed as well. Um, what my dad said. The other three in the room all groaned internally at the miscue, however nobody commented. The Ashi simply gestured to the seats in front of the desk. Please, take a seat. They promptly sat down, with Hiashi and Niji following them. Niji sat very formally, hands cupped in his lap, while Naruto sat in a more casual manner. Naruto glanced a few times at the boy, his new godbrother, as his father and Niji's uncle exchanged some pleasantries before going down to business. Niji also shot a few looks at Naruto, as if to get a red on the boy. However, both noticed the decisiveness of the statement from Hiashi. I think it is time. Naruto watched his father nod and turned to Niji. Niji, how much do you know about your father? He asked nicely. Niji flinched and shot a subtle glare to his side towards Hiashi, but answered the man. A few things I remember from before his death and things some people have told me about him. He honestly answered. Minato nodded, signaling his understanding. Did you know that your father and I were friends? Niji paused and shook his head. No, I did not. His face betrayed slightly his surprise. To tell you the truth, we were not simply friends. Outside of Kashina, I have to say your father was my best friend. It wasn't widely known, but it was true. Niji's face completely failed him as he looked at him in shock. Father and you were best friends. Minato nodded. 
He was my second choice to be Naruto's godfather, behind only Jiraiya Sensei. However, your father had no hesitations in naming me your godfather. Niji's eyes nearly popped out of his head. You are my godfather. Why didn't I know this? He angrily turned towards Hiashi, not even hiding his accusatory look. Minato Sama was believed dead, so there was no rush to tell you. Hiashi admitted honestly. But he was been alive for a month. Why wasn't I told before now? His anger was being focused at Hiashi, who Minato saw was being solely blamed. He stepped in calmly. Because, I wanted some time to get to know my son, before I did my duties as godfather. Niji quickly turned towards Minato. Duties as godfather? Minato nodded. Niji almost had a hopeful look before he shook his head. Impossible. Any Kanoha citizen with a Byakugan is to be raised by the Hyuga family unless the Hyuga clan leader allows it. Which Hiashi Sam already has. Niji took a moment to take everything in before he turned to Hiashi. Why? It was obvious he couldn't understand Hiashi's, the villain of his life, actions. That is simple, Niji. There are a few in the main branch who wish to do away with you for their fear of the talent you bring to the cadet branch. To fail your father, my brother, so completely in keeping his son safe from petty jealous would be shameful. Your brother? You have no right to call my father your brother, not after you ordered him to die for your own cowardness. Niji finally said the thing he had been thinking for eight years. He had spent years holding it in, but that statement broke the dam inside of him. Hiashi calmly took the claim, not saying anything in his defense. Naruto was confused. He had been quiet so far, there had been no need for him to say anything, but now he was out of the loop. What are you talking about? Niji quickly relayed to Naruto the history of the Hayuga incident as he knew it. Naruto turned to Hiashi, ready to say something, but his father stopped him. The past does not matter at the moment. Niji, Naruto, could you please leave the room for a moment? Niji agreed hesitantly, while Naruto did just as his father told him. The second Naruto shut the door behind him, Minato cast a privacy jutsu to stop his son or Niji from trying to listen in. He then turned back to the Hyuga leader. Why did you not tell Niji the truth, the whole story? Hokage-sama told me that his Ashi offered himself in your place, but you let his son believe you forced him. The Ashi calmly reached into his desk and pulled out a scroll. Firstly, I doubt Niji would believe me if I told him, due to his hatred of me. That is why his Ashi wrote the scroll before his death to explain the situation. Niji would believe this, but I do not think he would properly internalize it. What makes you say that? Minato asked, though he suspected he knew why. Niji's hatred is almost absolute, as is his belief in fate. Those two things are intertwined almost seamlessly. If one is able to break his belief in fate, then his hatred can be broken. However, if I simply gave him the scroll, he may construe it as some ploy or that it was simply his father's fate to die, no matter what he decided. I will entrust you with this scroll, but you must promise to give it to him only when he can understand. Agreed. Minato looked at the scroll and back to Hiashi. He didn't like it, but Hiashi made a strong case. I promise. Outside of the room, Niji and Naruto awkwardly stood next to one another. Naruto couldn't stand it even for a few moments, so he tried to strike up a conversation. So, you are taking the graduation test next week. Do you think you will pass? Niji looked towards Naruto and calmly nodded. Of course. I am rookie of the year. Naruto shook his head. Don't be too sure. I took that test last year and it was really hard. I failed pretty badly. Niji paused, looking over the boy, going to say one thing, but stopping himself. Instead, he replied. Well, you did try to take it two years early and you never applied yourself. It was fated you would fail. Fated? Yeah right, fate is for losers. You have to earn everything you do. Like me becoming Hokage. I'm gonna earn the spot of Hokage, not be fated. Niji shrugged. Perhaps, but it could be said it was your fate. You are the son of a Hokage, it does give you a much better chance. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he hated his argument. He was actually saying he might be Hokage, but that was because it was his fate. Naruto didn't know why it irked him so badly, but it did. It doesn't matter about that. I was gonna be Hokage even before I knew who my dad was. Yes, but you were still his son, thus giving you a better chance that it is your fate to be Hokage. Naruto was getting frustrated. Why do you think fate is everything? I bet you didn't think it was fate you would get a god brother. Niji paused and nodded. True, but even I can be wrong about fate. It is not my fate to know everything. Naruto was mad about this. Even when he proved him wrong, he still said it was fate. Living with this guy was going to be annoying. However, before he could reply, the door opened with his father and Hiashi saying goodbyes. Minato turned to Niji. Niji, you will be moving in with us at our house after you graduate. That will give you enough time to pack up and say all of your goodbyes. Is that alright with you? Niji nodded. Hi, Namika's sama Minato immediately shook his head. Please, you don't need to call me that. You may call me godfather or uncle or even Minato. 
Niji paused for a second. Okay Godfather. Minato nodded. That is good to hear, Niji. Have a good day. A day, Godfather. With that, Naruto and Niji shared an awkward goodbye, and the blonde duo left the Hyuga compound, returning home. Later that night, after listening to his son complain about Niji's obsessing over fate and a good hard training session, he was happy to see his son was advancing in the tree walking exercise so quickly. It took him two weeks to learn it when Jiraiya taught it to him. Only Minato and Jiraiya were up. Both stood in the training room, with Minato in an almost meditative state. You do not need to worry, sensei, I know what I am doing. Jiraiya let out a grunt. Look Gaki, I believe you, but are you ready yet? I mean, you still aren't half as good as you were back in the day. Maybe, but I need to get some closure before he moves in. Minato calmly responded, not looking at his sensei. Jiraiya sighed, but nodded. I guess you're right, but this seems really risky. How can you be sir he was cut off by Minato opening his eyes. I'm locked in. I'll be back in an hour, understand. Jiraiya simply nodded. Then, with a small grin at the challenge he was faced, Minato began to send Chakra to his Horatian tattoo, focusing on the faraway kunai that was his ticket for justice. Then, in a yellow flash, he was gone from the room. Minato took a second to gather himself and opened his eyes. He saw, on the wall, his three-pronged kunai. The exact kunai that let him make the jump he just made. He had often wondered the limits of his kunai if it could truly cross countries, and he had been proven right. He had just jumped from his home to the Rakage's tower. He couldn't sense the chakra of anyone in the room at the moment, so he took it to relax. It hadn't drained him mentally, a jump meant very little to him, but the mental stress in locating it made him a bit weary. He decided to take a seat, the seat across from the Rakage's desk, and he relaxed. He went over what he was going to say to the Rakage when he returned to the room. If he wasn't back in 30, he was planning on tripping one of the security traps to get him back immediately. If he hadn't tripped one he didn't notice already. He was hoping it wouldn't come down to a fight, but he might be tempted to throw a punch, depending on how much of a stubborn bastard Rekajay was going to be. If he was a bit apologetic, he wouldn't be angry. But if he still felt as if he was in the right, like how his father never apologized for what he tried with Kashina, he might try to assassinate the Rekaj. Not a good idea, he would admit, but still, he hoped it would work. He began to go over the room, seeing if he could find anything of note in the room. It was boringly plain, a few books that looked fairly unused, no decorative wall art. Such a bore. He almost didn't notice the door open, but heard the slight creak and immediately looked over at the person going through the door. My name be Karabi, best of all Dakumo Shinobi, with student so cool, make another man drool. Karabi rhymed to himself as he entered the room, oblivious to the man in the room. Minato was very tempted to laugh at the ridiculousness of the scene. He hadn't seen Karabi in years, since he fought him in a, and he found he was a Jinchuriki like his son was son, and technically himself. He looked much the same as he did 12 years ago, just a little older and a little wiss, a little more ma, a bit more respawns, a little older. My brother be the Reikage, what else do I have to say, we be the ones who kick some ass, come against us and you'll be under the grass. Karabi continued his rhymes as he still didn't notice Minato in the room. He was looking out the window behind the Reikage's desk, so Minato decided to let him know of his apprentice. My name is Minato, where is your bro, you two might be bad, but seeing me will make your bro real mad. Minato introduced himself in the same vein as Karabi would. Karabi jumped as he looked around, locking his eyes on him eventually. He stared at him for a few seconds before his eyes widened in recognition. So the rumors are true. The Yandame does live. Karabi stopped his rhymes as the serious scenario unfolded. Minato nodded. Yes, I am. So, Karabi-san, where is your brother, the Reikage? Karabi ignored the question. How the heck did you get in here? This time, Minato pointed to behind him at his signature kunai. As long as the formula is in place, Karabi's eyes went wide. Damn, that is impressive. Minato nodded. So where is your brother? Karabi let out a small sigh. It is kind of funny, Yandame san it is to talk about rumors about you and if you live. Obviously they do. So where have you been? Karabi was truly interested in this, as he held a great respect for the man, as Minato did for him. It's complicated. Minato told him simply. So, can you get your brother? I wish to talk to him. Karabi nodded and left to go get him. Despite respecting him, Minato didn't trust what was about to happen. Would the Rakage attack him, send Anbu to try and capture him or what? He was locked in on the kunai at his home, just in case. Soon, two people returned, and Karabi. So, Yandame sama I see you are back. What are you doing here? I tried to act coolly, but he was still very nervous. Why had Minato come to him, why had he chosen to got to him? What injustice had he done to him? It was his father who had taken his wife back then, not him. He only was afraid, though, because the man had sought him out and could be much stronger, due to some vengeance he wished to seek. 
Yes, Reikage sama I wish to talk to you about the Hyuga incident. The Reikage rose an eyebrow. Why are you bringing this up now? They wrongly killed our shinobi eight years ago, why didn't you bring it up then? I would have, but I was still in a coma. Saving my village from the Kaiubi and all takes a lot out of a person. The Reikage rose his eyebrow. So that is what happened to you? Stuck in a coma. Pity for you. So, what do you want to speak about with me? Minato let out his breath before he spoke. First off, you are a terrible liar, Reikage. We both know that you ordered it, just like your father ordered the capturing of Kishina-chan. Secondly, we both know what the Hyuga did, so there is no reason to hide it. They switched out his ashi for Hiashi. That is where you messed up, eh? For his ashi was my best friend. So, do you have anything to say? He could feel the slight amount of fear coming from A and decided to exploit it. He had grown more terrified at his words. Yes, all of this was true, but he was his best friend. He just had to call for the Yandame's best friend's death. However, he decided to try and hold his ground. Firstly, Yandame sama I have no clue what you are talking about. Secondly, we have done nothing on the matter because the daimyo opposed to any further actions. Finally, I did not know you held any relationship with a man. What does it matter in this case? We all have lost people important to us. He gave his life for his murderous broth he stopped when Minato held his hands up to tell him to stop. Finish that sentence and you will regret it. Minato was beginning to lose his temper. I thought you were a more honorable man than this, lying about unduly calling for a man's death. Harabi had been quiet so far, but he decided to interfere. Um, brother, yonde man, keep calm. No need to fight here in the tower, do you want to be fools? I nodded. Karabi is right, Yandame sama Let us handle this elsewhere. Minato, reluctantly, nodded. He had hoped it wouldn't come to blows, but with the rakage, fighting was always a possibility. He had handily defeated him years ago, it shouldn't be too difficult after all the training he subjected himself to, right? Ureya was getting ready to warn the Sandame about how Minato had gone into Kumo and was now trapped there, having been already 15 minutes late. That was until, the yellow flash suddenly appeared and a bleeding, exhausted Minato suddenly appeared. Minato. What happened in Kumo? He was frantic to know why his apprentice's ass had been kicked. Minato let out a breath. Fought the rakage. A lot more difficult than it used to be. Had to get the hell out of there, I was running on fumes. Jureya closed his eyes. Why did you fight the rakage? Jureya asked and wondered what the heck was happening. Rakage was an ass. Wouldn't apologize. Tried to force him to apologize. Didn't work. Gave him a nice scar thought, nice gash on his arm. Do you want me to take you to the hospital? Bonato shook his head. No, I don't want the Sandame to know what I did. He will be pissed I went behind his back to do something to Kumo. Jureya simply rolled his eyes. Kid, you should have waited another few months until you are better off. The fact you lasted against the rakage for so long is impressive, but I know you can do better. Seriously, I can bring you in, say we got into a mean spar. Minato just shook his head. No, I will heal overnight. Just take me to bed. Jureya hesitantly agreed and took Minato up to his room. He cleaned him up a little, getting rid of the dried blood. He put the covers over Minato, letting him rest up after the many bruises and total exhaustion he received from the rakage. As Jureya left the room, he shook his head at the student. He really hoped he didn't do something to bite Kanoha in the ass. He really did. Naruto was hanging out with Shikamaru and Choji a few days later, as class was not in session. Underclassmen had the day off for the genin exams, so Naruto was enjoying it. Except for the comments of his godfather who was buzzing around. You say that Nara, but I have never known a Nara to marry plain. Your wife will be hot and feisty, accepted. Jureya told the laziest of the trio, who only rolled his eyes and be in the same situation as my dad. Too troublesome. I'd rather stay single. Shikamaru glibly told the man. He was starting to regret coming over to Naruto's. Your father tried that too, if I call correctly. But the girl you are destined for will force you to acknowledge her. Naruto just let out a grunt. Don't tell me you believe in that destiny crap too, Hiro Sanin. I thought I would only have to hear that from Niji Nai san and not you. Joji only shook his head. You know Naruto, it is really weird. A month ago you were the orphan, now you have this big family. Lucky I guess for you, but weird. Naruto nodded. Yeah, I guess. Still, I wish they didn't have to be a pervert or have a pole stuck in their ass. Doji looked around and finally realized something. Where is your father, anyway? What does he do all day? Well, usually he trains with Iro san all day. I have no clue what he is doing today, I haven't seen him much since I found out about Niji. He is going through a recertification program to officially become a Jonin of Kanoha again. He should pass, but he is only really a high B-class threat now. Give him a few months and he will an A-rank shinobi, but it should be interesting the type of task Sensei gives to him. Naruto turned to Shikamaru and Choji, a question forming in his mind. 
what is it like? He asked, confusing the two for a moment about his meaning. I mean, worrying about your dad out on a mission. Shikamaru looked at Choji and shrugged. I just have to trust my dad is strong enough to do it. It would be such a drag if I worried every time he left for a mission. Toji nodded at his friend's comment. Yeah, I know my dad is super strong and can be an awesome shinobi. I have to trust he will deal with whatever is thrown at him. Really? It just comes down to trust. Naruto asked, surprised that it was such a simple thing. He never had to trust someone so implicitly before. It was an odd thought in retrospect. They are correct. Whenever my caretaker left for a mission, I had to trust they would succeed and come back. And if not, then it was their fate to pass on and for me to be alone. Naruto clenched his eyes and let out a sigh. Opening them, he turned back to his new brother. Sure, yeah. Fate. Whatever. Is that a headband? You passed. Niji nodded. His belongings had been moved in earlier that day and he would now be residing in the home. Yes, I have passed. I will have to wait a few days to find out who is on my team. I wonder who they will place with me. Gureya was listening to him and decided to answer. Well, where did you rank from this year? I was rookie of the year, of course. I would be nothing less. Well then, they will stick you with the kid who did worst in the class and one of the stronger females who has a different style than you do. You're Hayuga, so that mean either a heavy hitter ninjutsu user, unlikely for a girl at your age, or a weapons expert. Know who that would be? Niji thought for a second and let out a sigh. So it sounds like I will be teamed with that fool Rock Lee and Tenten. She is acceptable, at least. Naruto was trying to remember who they were from his short time in their class. He remembered Rock Lee suddenly and grew a little mad. Hey, don't badmouth Lee. He is a pretty cool guy and would try to help me with some of the work sometimes. Something he was barely competent at. And his lack of ability with ninjutsu and jinjutsu leave a lot to be desired as well. He is utterly hopeless as a shinobi. You shouldn't be talking so ill of a possible future teammate, Niji. A voice surprised the four as it was Minato wearing a jonin vest. So Gaki, sensei make you a jonin again. Minato nodded. Hi, I passed his requirements. Though he has special plans for me. He turned back to Niji. You should never be so dismissive of another's talents. Just because you have a bad ranking does not mean you are hopeless look at Jureya sensei here. He was the dead last of his year and he turned into a decent shinobi. The last bit was an obvious jab at the old man. Jureya grumbled. Decent. I am the great toad sage. Much more than decent. Niji studied the old man and gave a reluctant nod. This may be true, but he was destined to have a great sensei to make him so. I doubt Lee or I will receive the future Hokage as our instructor, godfather. Now, excuse me. I would like to go to my room. With a slight bow, he left the room. Winato humphed. Naruto was surprised by his father's actions. Why did you do that for, Otu-san? Winato let out a small chuckle. Sensei, you were spot on with who will be on Niji's team. It will be Rock Lee, him, and the Kinoichi known as Tenten. And he is technically correct that he won't be taught by a future Hokage. He then looked at the three boys waiting for his full answer. But they will be taught by a former Hokage. Winato was a little frustrated with the task that the Sandame had set out for him to do. It wasn't that it was difficult, but it was simply one he was not interested in doing. Mainly since it involved him. He hopped his way towards the memorial stone to pick up Kakashi, as been asked of him by the Sandame a few days beforehand. He landed roughly 10 feet behind Kakashi, who didn't so much as flinch. Instead, Kakashi simply continued to stare at the stone. Minato let out a sigh before speaking. You know, this is a fairly unproductive way to spend one's time. You could be doing something more useful. Like heading out to pick up your genin team. Kakashi perked up slightly at the comment, but shrugged. I don't have a genin team. Someone took them off my hands. Minato raised an eyebrow and walked up next to Kakashi, deciding to look at the stone. He hadn't visited it since he left his coma, and there were quite a few people that he had to pay respects to, often overlapping with Kakashi's list. What do you mean, someone else took them off of your hands? He was honestly curious at the statement. Kakashi didn't respond for a minute. Minato thought that he wasn't going to, but then Kakashi slowly explained. I don't want a genin team this year. I would probably fail them automatically without giving them a chance. I don't think that, right now, I can lead a group of students. From what Hokage-sama said the other day, they are very talented but would fail my exam anyway. What do you mean, they would fail? Minato, for the first time, was getting to take a good look at the man Kakashi had become and he was not going to waste it. My team consists of Inara, a female Inuzuka, and a talented civilian with a crush on said Inuzuka. Under the conditions of the bell test, it would be instant failure. The Nara will figure out the issue, but the other two won't listen to him. The female Inuzuka will be headstrong to prove her dominance and alphaness, and the civilian wouldn't want to make the Inuzuka fail. 
The Nara, if he was a Chunin, could pass it solo with their family techniques, but your standard Nara will usually only know the Kajimane Jutsu. The other two will either be too headstrong or too limited in one's abilities to acquire the bells, meaning they would fail. So, I gave them to someone who would give them a different test. Renato was slightly impressed with the logic, but was mad at one aspect. So why don't you change the test? Why change what always works? Kakashi quickly responded. Before Minato could ask what he meant, Kakashi explained it to him. This test, to my knowledge, has only been completed successfully on four occasions. The first occasion created the Sandame Hokage and the two elders of Konoha. The second occasion created the three Sanin. The third occasion created the Yandame Hokage and two top prospective ninja who were, if I remember your story correctly, killed by the Achibi when it got loose during your team's Chunin exam in Suna. The fourth occasion created an Anbu captain, the best medic prospect in Kanoha since Lady Tsunade herself, and the most resilient Achiha who hadn't yet activated a Sharingan. Why change the test when the test works? Renato turned to study the expression on his former student's face, but couldn't really see much. With one eye covered in a mask, it was near impossible to get a red on him. Kakashi glanced towards his sensei and saw he was observing him. Deciding it was prudent, he asked him, so, you accepted a new set of students. Renato simply nodded. It was a requirement of the Sandame that I became a Jounin sensei in the meantime of my skill redevelopment. So you didn't want to? He asked, a bare hint of urgency in his voice. No, I did. But simply not immediately. Minato coolly answered back. Are you really trying to forget about me that much? He replied, a half-joking tone to his voice. Trying to replace us? Minato paused, not fully sure how to reply. No, it isn't like that. I just I like teaching a lot. He finished somewhat lamely. Kakashi's eyes showed his skepticism, but Minato continued. You three will always matter to me. I would have given my life to save Rin or Ibido, and I would still give my life to save you. Kakashi's eye went wide in surprise. What, you think I would let you die just because of some grudge? Kakashi didn't say anything to that surprising comment in his mind, but simply said, shouldn't you be getting to the academy? I wouldn't have left for another three hours, which means it is about time now. With a small eye smile visible, the mood changed, and Minato nodded. I suppose it is. He turned to leave his student, but stopped himself. He didn't look back, but he did tell him something. You know, Abito would probably make fun of you for copying him, right? With that purposefully vague statement, he made his way to the academy to pick up the new Team 9. Niji Hayuga was impatiently waiting to discover who exactly his sensei for the foreseeable future. The San and Jureya had been correct in his assessment on who his future teammates would be, it was Rock Lee and Tenten. He was somewhat disappointed that he would have to carry as incompetent of a future shinobi as Lee, but it was his fate to deal with such an obstacle in his career. He had just endured a lunch with the two and had gotten to know the two on a more personal level. Lee was everything he had expected. He was foolish, loud, obnoxious, and abrasive. Spending half an hour for lunch was an endeavor for his senses. The possibility of years having to deal with him Niji was hoping his fate would be to see the error of becoming a shinobi and retiring after his first difficult mission. He would never hope someone's fate was death, but he suspected it might be so for his male teammate. His female teammate on the other hand she was a worthy one. She was a serious Kanoichi in the utmost way. She had never fallen prey to a crush or had been removed from the focus of becoming a shinobi. She had, on her own admission, attempted to study medicine and discovered that it was not her fate to become a great medic like her idol Tsunade. However, Niji had belief that it was her fate to become a great weapons mistress on the same level as a Tsunade. He sat straight up in his seat as somebody entered the room for the first time. He had tall, black spiky hair with a well-groomed beard complementing it. His most distinct features was a face that looked fairly familiar to him and a cigarette hanging out the corner of his mouth. Team 6, come with me. The Jonin said. Niji watched as the three members of Team 6 left. He regretted that the Shuchi Nara was not his teammate and instead it had been Rock Lee. The Nara had been close to claiming the title of dead last but was too naturally talented to let his minimal effort secure the position. He was, perhaps, the closest thing he had to a friend in the academy. He almost pitied him as he watched his Kanoichi teammate, Kira Inuzuka, leave behind him, her brown minkin in her arms. She was nearly as loud as Lee and was obsessed with proving her alphaness. He supposed it was due to the belief of natural male superiority, a belief Niji did not believe, and her attempts to overcome it. The final member, a boy simply known as Koga, was a pity of a shinobi since he admired the Inuzuka female and had become the even more degrading fanboy of hers. He watched the trio leave, wondering when his sensei would arrive. He looked outside towards the window in a moment of boredom. He noticed the increase of whispers that began as he did that and turned his head back to the front of the classroom to see what the ruckus was. He was shocked to see his godfather stop his walk into the classroom and look over the class, a spare second of it lingering on him. 
Then, in a booming tone, he announced. Team 9, let's move out. His eyes widened at this revelation. His godfather would become his sensei. This new development intrigued Niji as he quietly stood up and made his way to the front. He noticed the Tenton, while in some degree of awe of her luck, was moving towards the front of the class. However Lee hadn't moved. He was just staring fiercely at his godfather, his eyes appearing to be covered in fire. Niji couldn't help but think it may be due to some medical condition. Then, Lee bursted up, screaming in that tone of his, Yosh. What luck I have. I am honored to have such a great shinobi as the Yandame as my Jonin sensei. His godfather simply gave a small smile to Lee. Thank you, Lee san. But I would prefer for you to call me just Minato sensei. Now hurry along. Niji was now slightly unnerved by how the fire was burning in Lee's eyes, seriously isn't that a health hazard that they could do that. Before watching Lee bow and follow them down the steps, the trio played follow the leader to Minato sensei as they made their way out of the building and to the front yard of the school. Stopping at the swing, his sensei sat down on it before gesturing his students to the ground. Take a seat. The three quickly sat down as they waited for their sensei to speak. So, obviously you three know who I am, but let me tell you more about myself. My name is Minato Namikaze, the father of Naruto Uzumaki and guardian of Niji Hayuga, he was interrupted, however. What? Both Lee and Tenten called out in surprise. Niji had been surprised by the bluntness of his confession of their familial relationship, but he hadn't reacted. Realizing they were waiting for an explanation, Niji provided it for them. Apparently, my father had been best friends with Minato-sensei and had thus named him my godfather. After his recovery from his coma, my uncle allowed him to become my legal guardian for reasons I care not to explain. Enten was surprised but merely nodded her head in understanding. Lee, on the other hand Yosh. What a great story. I was so surprised to hear about this, but I am most glad to know that the bonds of my teammate and sensei are so close. Minato suddenly stared very intently at Lee because of his sudden outburst before asking, Lee San, do you happen to have a relative named Mido Guy? Lee paused for a moment and shook his head. I do not, Minato Sensei. Why do you ask? Minato waved off the question. Sorry, you simply reminded me of him to some extent. He was a rival for one of my pupils, you see. Maybe one day I will introduce you to him. Lee bowed in respect. That would be a great honor, Minato Sensei. In response, he nodded back. You're welcome. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. Well, I am an only child and the star pupil of the San Jureya, who you will probably meet at some time or another. My favorite hobby is to read, though I haven't had much of a chance since my recovery began. So do not be offended if you catch me reading on a D rank, assuming you pass. The rank. Pass. What do you mean, Minato sensei? Tenten asked her sensei. I will explain in a moment. However, may you three talk about yourselves some. Your likes, dislikes, hobbies. I do wish to get to know you better. Lee raised his hand. I wish to go first. My name is Rock Lee, and my likes are training, curry, and animals. I dislike those who pick on the weak. My hobby is to train. My desire is to become a great shinobi, no matter my handicaps. Niji let out a hump, drawing Minato's attention to him. Why do you make such a noise, Niji-san? Minato asked. It is not Lee's fate to become a great shinobi. He has little talent for any of the ninja arts and was passed for reasons beyond me. If he ever reached beyond the ranking of Jenin, I would be shocked. Lee looked down from the scathing review, and Tenten looked uneasy at the harshness of Niji's words. Minato was agitated by them and simply shook his head. I truly doubt, Niji-san, that you have been given the ability to read one's fate, so you should not act as if you can. His sentence ended in a sharp tone. Lee-san can become great, even if you say he is not talented in the ninja arts. With training, I am sure he will succeed. Now, Tenten, tell us about yourself. Fenton was surprised at the shift of focus, but she simply nodded her head and began to speak. Hi. Well, my name is Tenton. I don't have a last name, my mom left my father and decided to drop his name from our names. I like fortune telling, viewing jutsu and weapons, and dislike cheaters and people who underestimate girls. My hobbies are pretty much training and dancing, I guess. It helps me with my attacks. My dream is to become as great a ninja as Tsunade. Minato simply nodded. Those are good goals to have, Tenton san now, Niji-san, tell us a little about yourself. Niji let out a small sigh and quickly got it over with. I like training, herring and meditation. I dislike many things. My hobbies are personal and my dreams unreachable. Minato let out a sigh at his godson's conduct but simply let it go for the moment. Alright then. Now, let me explain what I mean earlier when I said, if you pass. The truth is, you have not yet become Genin. What do you mean, Minato-sensei? Lee quickly called out. There is a secondary test with a much lower passing rate that one must take in order to become a genin. 
If a team fails, then they must either go back to the academy or, if their sensei recommends it, be dropped from the program altogether. Niji was surprised he had never heard of such a thing and was intrigued on what would the test be. The test will commence tomorrow at daybreak. I'm going to give the time until then to prepare for it. How do we prepare for it? Tenten asked, beating Lee to the punch. Pretend it is a survival exercise. But you will have to survive against me. Lee's eyes widened in horror. Survive against you? That is impossible. Lenato nodded. Well that is technically true, surviving against me is not the goal of the exam. Then what exactly is the goal of this exam? Niji asked directly, curious as to where this was going. You will find out tomorrow. The only hint I will give you is this, look underneath the underneath. Meet me at training ground 7 at 7 am. And with that bit of advice, he vanished. The three genin. Look underneath the underneath, huh? What do you think he meant? Tenten looked to ask the two boys of her team, but was greeted by only Lee's face, Niji already leaving. Where are you going? She called out to him. To prepare. Niji replied, never looking back. I swear, when I get out of this Minato sensei, I will shut off all of your chakra points. Minato would normally be slightly worried about the talented Hayuga's threat, especially since they lived with one another, but he was too busy trying to repress the smirk that was naturally forming on his face. It wasn't voluntary, but it reminded him of a funny incident involving Niji's father. Ashina had confused his byakuganing the hot spring in an attempt to find his perverted sensei as peeping. So, much like the situation his father had been in, he was tied to a stump. Niji-san, that is not a nice statement at all. Minato-sensei would only have done this if he had a good reason to. Correct, sensei. Lee tried to calm Niji down. Denton followed Lee's lead. Yeah, Niji, there's no reason to flip out right now. No reason to flip out. Niji quickly fired back at the bun brunette. Of course there is a reason to, as you so put it, flip out. We have failed the test, which means we are going back to the academy, where I will be forced to endure another year of. I believe that is a sufficient reason to, as you put it, freak out. Lenato had calmed his chuckles and spoke up. You three don't have to worry about that, actually. We don't. Tenton was surprised by this fact. Does that mean that you will pass us because of how impressive we were sensei? Lee asked in excited manner. Lenato shrugged. Actually, you guys perform so impressively poor out there that none of you are going back to the academy. I am going to make the recommendation that you be dropped from the program altogether. All three kids went wide. Say what? All three said, Niji angrily, Tenton confused, and Rock Lee dejectedly. Your performances were so terrible that you shouldn't even become shinobis. Let alone you ignored the one piece of advice I gave you yesterday. I did not ignore it sensei. Lee quickly yelled out in protest. I made sure to look underneath the underneath and was always making sure that you were not leading me into a trap or were actually some sort of clone or anything like that. Lenato sighed. True, Lee San, you did do that, but that was not what I meant by it. I was referring to the rules I set up at the beginning of the test. What do you mean those rules godfather? Niji abandoned all sense of decorum at the threat of his future livelihood at stake. They were quite clear. Those who got a bell passed, those who didn't would be sent back to the academy. Only two could succeed. What could be any clearer? Ah, but those rules should have made you suspicious in the first place. Why would I be able to take on one or two pupils, but they assigned me a team of three? Why would I assign a test that these pupils would foolishly attack me one on one, challenging a Jonin freshly out of the academy? The thought you could possibly do it by yourself is ludicrous. I was probably more talented than you were Niji-san when I took this test with Jurei sensei and he beat me down as well on my first attempt at the bells. So, tell me, what was the purpose of this exam? Lenato left the question hanging out there, a key factor if he would pass them. Even if it was his godson, he would still fail him here if his team did not get this answer correctly. He heard a noise coming from Tenten and turned his attentions to her. You were saying something, Tenten-san. Tenten looked petrified, praying she wasn't wrong, before she took a gulp. Could it be could it be we were supposed to work as a team? Lenato internally let out a sigh of relief as he nodded. Yes Tenten-san, you are exactly correct. This test is supposed to teach you teamwork and seeing if three students can comprehend this concept. You may think power or flashy techniques are keys to succeeding, but you are wrong. It is your team that is most important. He paused for a moment, reflective, before he decided to tell them the story. Do you ever wonder why you never heard of my teammates? Why there are no stories about them? You think there would be, considering the legend surrounding me? Lee was the first to answer. No, sensei, I have not thought of that, but I am assuming that they perished. Lenato nodded. Yes, they did. They died over 20 years ago when we attempted the Chunin exams in Suna when I was 13. He paused his story when he heard a mumble from Niji. What did you say, Niji-san? Speak up. Niji looked up at the man and repeated what he said. They must have been weak and fated to die. He defiantly decreed. 
Bonato smirked and shook his head. Perhaps you are right this time Niji-san, perhaps they were fated to die, but they were anything but weak. Minato took a deep breath as he prepared to tell the story. Their names were Hinata Suzuki and Kobariichi. Hinata is a total tomboy, an expert on fire jutsus and was highly interested in swords. Koba was a bit of a goof, he was our class dead last, but I knew he was incredibly reliable and quite good at tojutsu. We had been a team for three years just about and were getting ready to take the chunin exams a second time. We had taken it in Kanoha the year before, but got knocked out in the second round by a group of pretty powerful Taki Shinobi, one of them was promoted to Chunin that year in the exams. But we were much more focused, and we managed to make it to the finals, which was 16 bracket competition. We had to fight in the first round and defeated the Kumo Nin that we faced with little injury and were rested when we faced our competition in the semi-finals, a team from Suna. We didn't have any knowledge of them, so the fact that one of them was a Jinchuriki came to a total shock to everybody from Kanoha. Sorry, but what's a Jinchuriki? Tenten interrupted the narrative with this poignant comment. Minato had been expecting that question, since it was a taboo term in Kanoha still. Naruto and his secret would be kept out of the public realm until Minato was sure his son had fully accepted his burden. A Jinchuriki is a person who, in an effort to control one of the nine Byu, is made into a living seal of the demon. He explained to the wide eyes of the three. A living seal. Why don't they just kill them, like you did with the Kaiubi? Tenten asked. That is a story for another day, Tenten san. Anyway, we were challenging the Suna team and had quickly knocked out the two teammates of the Jinchuriki, neither of whom should have been taking the exam yet in the first place. I assume they had just been full ins, just to the Jinchuriki could enter the exam. I don't remember his name, but I remember his face. He had dead green eyes and short jet black hair, and he wore a gourd on his back, which was filled with sand he could control, even without him willing it to do so. He could manipulate sand whoever he wanted, even sand that wasn't in his gourd, but it was that sand that would protect him from being even touched. He had shown no cares about his teammates and had just stood idly by as we defeated them. It was three on one and we felt we had the advantage, but no matter what we did, nothing was hitting him. Koba couldn't him with Tejutsu and none of Hinata's fire attacks were doing anything. My seals weren't of much help either and I hadn't mastered any of the lightning jutsu Jureya sensei had taught me. So, I made a gambit that I regret to this day. Bonato paused for a moment, looking at his enraptured students, before continuing. I cast a seal I was still learning, a double entrance seal. It is a seal that links two marks to one another, allowing things stored in one to be released at the other seal. It only works over short distances, but it was perfect for this match. I made the seal on a scroll I laid on the ground and another on a scroll I was holding. Then, I had Hinata and Koba maneuver the Jinchuriki over the other seal. He had been half-heartedly attacking us, making us dodge, but I thought I had found a way to get back at him for underestimating us. So, I pulled out one of my custom explosive tags and activated it and sealed it into the seal and threw it as far away as possible. The three students gasped, having learned in class about both explosive tags and seals. It was a highly idiotic idea to mix the two together and was suicide to seal an active explosive tag into a seal. Doing so was a very potent combination. Tenten, however, noted the genius in the concept, having been interested in seals already for some time. Because of how the seal worked, the explosion blew out both scrolls and was magnified by the chakra in the seal. The guy never saw it coming. One moment he was lazily stalking us, the next he is up in smoke. Koba goes in to try to knock him out, hoping the sand wouldn't stop him when the sand sends him flying back. The smoke clears and the guy is suddenly flopping around. The force of the explosion blew up both of his legs, tearing them to shreds. We thought the match was over and we were certain of it when he obviously passed out. We were waiting for the instructor to announce to us we had won, but that was when we heard this scream. It was coming from the guy as the sand from his gourd and from the ground began to collect around him. First the legs were reformed with sand and then his body formed with one giant tail. The guy was the host of the one-tailed Byu, a tanuki named Shukaku. As I later learned, he gives any host insomnia, making it impossible to sleep in most cases. And when they do sleep, he temporarily gains control over his host's body. And with wounds as bad as the ones I had inflicted, it near total control of the body. From there, it was a mess. San Shinobi began to intervene, and Sensei came into the fray to try and get it under control. We tried to help as best we could, but it was a terrible situation. Eventually, we found ourselves huddled together and we made a plan. We had collected enough data to know if he was woken up, the beast would be reined into his seal. So, we went in, Hinata turning the sand into glass and Koba breaking it up, while I helped try to disperse sand with a lightning jutsu that I wouldn't have tried in any other situation. We were actually making a lot of progress on our part, we had a couple other shinobi helping us, and we had opened the face temporarily. 
I made a move with a seal I had prepared, a shock that was supposed to wake him up for a moment. But that is when it happened. Sand spikes shot from the demon's paw, and I could only watch as they impaled Koba and Hinata. After that, I was knocked out by a spike landing a few inches to the right of me. Another shinobi came in and saved the day, using the opening we set up to wake up the boy long enough for the demon to be forced back into the seal. Minato looked longingly off to his left, thinking about it. The boy died from bleeding out, and soon a resealed shukaku into his ancestral container, a blessed teapot from a very ancient and powerful monk. And I was without my team. But without teamwork, we wouldn't have lasted that long. Without teamwork, who knows what damage shukaku could have done. Without teamwork I probably would have died. Anada's last words were to warn me of the spike that knocked me out. If she hadn't said anything, I would have been impaled and killed as well. Teamwork is something that cannot be overstressed. When you work with a team, you are much stronger as a whole than as individuals. And for teamwork, you will do things you never thought impossible. After that, I became obsessed with the idea of reaching your teammates as quickly as possible. That was why I initially developed the Hiroshin no Jutsu, to teleport to my friends so I could save them. But on that same point, don't let your regrets hold you back. They promoted me after that exam, due to all the potential I showed and such, and I rejected it. I was inspired to follow the vow a man sensei had introduced us to, to stay a genin for the rest of his life. Jiraiya sensei knocked some sense into me, saying that Hinata and Koba wouldn't want me to spend my life ignoring my potential. One shouldn't live their lives for the dead. Minato finished his rant, giving them a moment to let it sink in. After a minute, Lee suddenly bowed down to Minato. Please, sensei, give us another chance. I swear I will perform the best teamwork ever. Denton nodded. Please Minato-sensei, give us another chance. Niji said nothing. Minato looked over the three, before nodding. Fine, I will give you another hour. However, there are two changes to the rules. Now, you must really capture the bells from me. And secondly, you cannot untie Niji from the stomp. Do so, and you will automatically fail and be kicked out of the program, understand? Denton and Lee gulped, looked at each other, and nodded. Hi, sensei. Niji only glared at Sensei. Minato simply nodded. I'll be waiting for you. With that, he vanished from the Genin's eyes, dropping something none of them noticed. The three Genin looked towards one another to try and figure out what to do. Niji struggled with his ropes, while Tenten and Lee looked at each other. Tenten nodded slightly towards Lee, who moved to the back of Stump and grabbed the ropes. Niji squirmed in protest. Are you really that stupid? He said not to untie me. I will escape myself. I will not let my teammate to be trapped to this stump. For teamwork's sake, we need all three of us. I know I am not the best, and I still have very far to go to become so. I know you are very good though, Niji, probably a lot better than I will be for some time. Tenten and I cannot do this alone, so I am untying you so we can win. You idiot. If you untie me, none of us become shinobi. Do you think he will not know what you did? Godfather is anything but stupid, something you apparently are. Slap. Shut up. Tenten moved her hand away from the cheek of Niji. Just shut up. Lee San is my teammate, and I will not let anyone ridicule him for no good reason. Both Lee and I think this is for the best, and if you weren't so stubborn, you would realize that too. So let us help you, then we can go and get the bells. Understand. Her tone was very forceful, making Niji listen. Niji paused for a moment, before sighing. Hein, hurry up Lee. He said in a defeated manner, and quickly found himself free of the ropes. If they had been normal ropes he could have escaped fairly easily, but something about the way his godfather tied them, or something about the ropes themselves, made it impossible. Niji stood up and brushed himself off. So, what is the game plan? Suddenly, in a flash, Minato appeared before them, picking up the kunai he had dropped. You disobeyed my direct orders. Do you know what that means? He menacingly stood over the three. Fenton looked around before finding her voice. Yeah, it means we were using teamwork and being good team members. Hi, Tenten Chan is right. Lee upgraded the suffix of his female teammate. We are working as a team, just like you wanted us to. Niji looked at the two and sighed. I'll back them up here. We are a team now, Sensei, just like you wanted. Niji was internally praying that this act of bravado wouldn't get them booted from the program altogether. I only have one thing to say to you three. Minato paused, turning his attention to each three, building up the suspense, as all three unconsciously leaned in, awaiting their fates. You pass. Naruto smiled as he looked over to his father, eating his lunch with little notice to him at the moment. This was because, for the first time in a few weeks, it was just going to be him and his father. Gureya had left a few days before on account of his duties to the village as spymaster, while Niji was off training in solitude at his secret spot, Minato had privately confirmed to be by the riverbank off the northeast wall of the Hyuga estate, the same location his Ashi had trained at years before. 
other people were not highly privy to the location of the Namika's estate, and most of them were aware that today was a day for father and son. Minato quickly finished his meal and looked over to his son, who had turned back to finishing his meal. So Naruto, what would you like to do today? He asked Naruto. Um, he thought to himself for a moment, could we go and visit mom's grave? I mean, we went there the day you woke up, but we really haven't gone since then. Minato nodded in agreement. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Clean up and get changed, and we'll head over. Naruto groaned for a moment about having to clean up, but he took the dirty plates from the table to the kitchen. Minato got out of his chair and began making his way to his room to change into more proper attire. His mind could not help but drift to the scolding he had received a few days prior at the hands of the Hokage. Flashback, Minato barely looked guilty as he read over the decoded message sent from Kumagakur. You had the gall to go to Kumo, unauthorized, and follow it up with an assault on the leader of a village. While officially bringing up the fact both sides were willfully ignoring, in that the body Kumo obtained was not that of Hiyashi Hayuga, but of his twin. The ramifications this may hold down the road are tremendous. I had to send a letter of peace immediately after receiving that notification of a breach in peace. I ought to have you arrested, Yande Murnat, you know that Minato. Saratobi fiercely glared at his successor predecessor. Minato didn't flinch at the admonishment. If you are going to arrest me, then do so, Hiruzen. I will not apologize for my actions. They needed to be done. But we also need war. You are letting your emotions rule you. How can I rely on you if you are too emotional? Saratobi asked him rhetorically. I wouldn't have started a war. His pride and ego would have gotten in the way of letting it escalate to between nations. Minato coolly responded. Perhaps the A you knew, but that was over a decade ago. People change. And as a leader, even a former one, you need to get over your personal issues. You know that, right? Minato began to feel guilty. He did know that. He truly did. But I know you would have wanted to do the same thing, Hiruzen. And as I was not a formal shinobi, I thought I could do something about it. You would have wanted to get justice too, right? Minato began to defend himself in a battle he knew he couldn't win. Tsuritobi calmed himself down long enough to pull out a bottle of sake, motioning Minato to sit. Maybe that is true, but I also wouldn't have done something. You were never a great leader, you know that Minato. He was shocked at that criticism, but held his tongue. You are one of the best damn shinobi I have ever seen, and a hero that would sacrifice himself without a second thought, but not a great leader. Not a bad one, either, but you never got what being a leader meant. It meant compromise. It means, at times, hypocrisy. It means doing things that no one likes because it is in their best interest. Why do you think I give Danzo half the leeway he gets, or ask of you to keep him by your side, despite your history? It means meeting the man who led the destruction of your sensei and shaking his hand for diplomacy. And it means not provoking wars with Kumo over a personal grudge. Do I make myself clear? Coincidentally, Minato had just remembered why Suratobi was called God of Shinobi. He had come to accept he had acted poorly, not simply that, but stupidly. He had only planned for the encounter, not the fallout. He had forgotten to think, and he had endangered the village and deserved that verbal beatdown. However, he did disagree with Suratobi on one major point. Hey dad. Let's get going. Minato looked at his son, dressed up. He smiled back at him. Sure son. Let's get going. As they were in the forest, alone on their march to Kashina's grave, Naruto began to ask questions. So, dad, how is Niji's team? He won't tell me squat. Minato chuckled. Nothing much is happening right now. We are just getting used to each other's abilities. Between fighting Niji to show half of his abilities and trying to find a path of concentration for Rock Lee, we are having issues meshing. Besides a few D-rank missions, we haven't done anything major. You don't need to worry. It will be a few months before you need to worry about me leaving for a few weeks for a mission. Naruto frowned. It almost sounds like being a ninja is boring. Minato smirked. Well, I think it would be better that way, don't you? If you don't need to fight, that means there is peace in the lands. Naruto hesitated, but found himself agreeing to what his dad was saying. Yeah, I guess you're right. But it doesn't hurt to prepare right. So we should all train up to be as strong as possible right? Maybe like teaching me Rasengan. Naruto decided to try and ask again to learn the move he truly wanted to learn. Minato couldn't help but roll his eyes. Didn't I tell you need to wait until after you graduate from the academy? Along with a couple of other techniques you need to know before I let you start. But don't worry so much. You don't have to focus so much on growing up you know. I moved back the age to 12 for most graduates for a reason. It was to allow them to live a more normal life than in older days. He tried to sagely tell his son. As much as he enjoyed watching his son's eager attitude, he was dreading the day he would go out for a C or B rank mission. What if he didn't come back? As a parent, he was supposed to worry and he was taking full advantage of it. Dad, it isn't just growing up. Who wouldn't want to learn cool moves, you know? 
and I need to get as strong as possible ASAP so I can become the next Hokage. No offense to Jiji, but he already retired once. And if he picks someone young like you were, I might have gray hairs before I get a chance. One somewhat noticeable difference in Naruto, his father noticed, was that he had begun to think things through more often. It had been a part of his lessons he gave to do so, but seeing it in practice was good as well. Minato shook his head. Well, you don't have to worry so much about learning cool moves. You definitely aren't ready for Rasengan, but I will give you some avenues to learn cool jutsu. But it won't be an overnight process. Naruto began to get giddy at the prospect as they made their way into the graveyard, which quickly sobered him up. He eyed his mother's grave, wishing he had the same chances with her he did have with his father. They lingered there for nearly a half hour, enjoying mindless conversation with the late Kishina Yuzumaki, when Minato gave a somewhat serious look to Naruto. Naruto, could you head home before me? I have some private things to say before I leave. Naruto, understanding, nodded his head. He quickly kissed the grave and told his mother goodbye before telling his father he would see him soon. He bounded out of the field, leaving Minato mostly alone. The figure dropped its jinjutsu once both were sure Naruto was out of range. What are you doing here, Danzo? Minato spat towards the one-eyed cripple. Danzo kept his somber look on his face. Am I not allowed to pay my respect to the deceased as well? Not when it is my wife. Minato defensively said. Now, now. There is no need to get angry. I thought you would be more willing to see me after spending so much time with your son after a long absence. Especially seeing as I kept my promise to you that you forced me to swear. Danzo told him. You only kept it because you fear what I would have done otherwise. And my time with my son gave me even more reason to detest you, Danzo. Minato narrowed his eyes towards him, but he did not notice. Well, I did not come to speak about your son. I came instead to congratulate you on your little fight with Kumo. Had I the capability, I would have wanted to do the same thing. Minato suddenly cut him off. The difference is, I did it for a fallen friend. You would have done it solely for the war to follow. Danzo shook his head. I would not do it just for the war. You severely misjudge me, Minato. Whatever is best for Konoha, that is what dictates me. Are you not the same as me? Minato shuddered at that comparison. Never compare me to you again, Danzo. Now good day. He began to leave the field, stopping only to say his goodbyes to Kashina. As he was almost out of sight, Danzo had the last word. You will see I am right someday, I know you will. Like father, like son. Naruto sighed in boredom. It was his dad's third lesson with him and Rock Lee about Fuinjutsu, and they were still talking theory for the most part. Lee gave his undivided attention on the matter, but Naruto didn't keep focus. It wasn't out of some expected genetic entitlement that he would be a master Fuinjutsu user, but out of a disinterest on the style itself. Despite his father's best interests to make the lessons exciting, such as demonstrating how to create an explosive tag, Naruto was barely feigning interest. The current matter the former Hokage was lecturing about was in relations to the special paper needed for most seals. Lee broke up the lecturing with a question. Question, Minato-sensei. Minato stopped mid-sentence and acknowledged the statement. Ask, Lee-san. Lee double-checked with the notes he had been taking before speaking. You said that this chakra paper is by far the best conduit of the seals, but you also mentioned how everything had the potential to be used for a seal. Does this mean if I put a storage seal on a boulder, it could be used as such? Minato smirked, remembering asking that same question 25 years ago from his sensei. Well, it is possible, but the effect is far diminished. And the boulder is not exactly a stable environment to put a seal. It would most likely just end up blowing up in your face. Seals need smooth surfaces because the ridges on materials like stone or natural wood destabilize the seal and make it a de facto explosive tag. Lee thought about that comment for a moment before jotting something down in his notes. Naruto, who happened to catch his father's explanation had a question. So what would happen if you put the seal of an explosive tag on a rock? Would it be a really dangerous explosive tag, then? Minato shook his head. Hardly. The seals would become less reliable while being set and the impact is lessened. If you put an explosive tag on a tree, you will knock it down. But if you were to put the seal itself on the tree. Some damage, but it will live to see another day. Neither Blonder noticed the fires of thought burning in Rock Lee's eyes, as if he had a great epiphany. The lesson continued for a few moments longer, before Minato looked out the window and realized it was getting well past noon. He turned to the duo. Alright, lesson is over for the day. Lee, I think you should spend some time at the training posts, I've seen an improvement in your tojutsu overall but I know with your problems that your abilities in the art are of the utmost importance. Lee nodded his head. Yes, sensei. I will go there immediately. I will see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. for the team meeting. He saluted his sensei before turning to wonder. And Naruto-san, have a wonderful day as well. Naruto nodded back to him. No problem, bushy brows. Hope you have a good day as well. His father followed suit. 
Have a good day, Lee San. I will see you tomorrow. With that farewell, Rock Lee left the Namika's estates and headed to the training grounds. Alone now, Minato beckoned his son to come outside without saying any words. Naruto followed suit, curious what was going to happen next. Standing in the large clearing of the front yard, Minato smiled. Naruto, I have seen a remarkable improvement for you in both Tejutsu and Chakra control. Your form has finally reached the level it should be at, well you have total mastery of the tree walking exercise. For these successes, I have decided to teach you the first Jutsu I ever learned. Raiden. Thunder wave. Thunder wave. Naruto looked at him curiously. Minato didn't bother explaining, as he planned to show him. He flashed through the four hand signs needed for the jutsu at a lightning pace, before bellowing out, Raiden. Thunder wave. With that, a wave of electric sparks flew through the air from the direction of Minato towards Naruto. Naruto tried to dodge the attack, but it was too late. He found that he couldn't even move now. His whole body was numb, and most of his muscles had seized up. All in all, it was uncomfortable. After about six seconds, the effects began to fade, and within fifteen Naruto had regained his full mobility. Testing his muscles, he turned to his dad with a puzzled look. How did you do that? Minato began to explain. This jutsu is your basic run-of-the-mill Raten style technique, C rank. It is a shorter range jutsu that funnels the electricity in your body and the air towards your opponent and uses their nervous system to help paralyze them. It doesn't last too long and can be overpowered with burning your chakra reserves, but it is very effective in a fight for tactical purposes and against those who don't know how to counter it. Naruto took in the information and began to nod as if he understood. So you use electricity to stun your opponent. It turns out, he did understand it. Somewhat. Honestly, his second response would have been, so it is shinobi magic, right? But he was glad his dad nodded. Exactly. So now, I want you to memorize these hand signs first and show me you can quickly perform them. Don't push any chakra into it, just the hand signs. He repeated the signs at a slower pace and watched as Naruto formed them with him. After a few slow test runs, Naruto knew he had gotten it. So, he quickly flashed through the four hand signs and held his hands out in the air, Raiden. Thunder wave he mimicked his father, making sure not to pump any of his reserves into the technique. Minato nodded sagely. This is perfect, Naruto. Now, this is the tricky part. You are going to have to pull the chakra from your body and imagine it becoming electricity. Imagine the air around your body becoming electricity as well. Then, perform the hand signs, letting the chakra run through you, before you push it towards me. Wait, so I am attacking you? Naruto asked him, a little worried for his safety. Minato was quick to extinguish his fears. Don't worry, I am more of your practice dummy. I won't get hurt, you should know I am made of stronger stuff than that. Naruto still had a worried look on his face, but he steeled his nerves. All right dad, here it comes. He went quiet for a moment, following the advice of his father. Then, he quickly performed the hand signs before pushing his hands out in the air, hands still in the final sign. Raiden. Thunder wave. There may have been a spark or two, but nothing certain. Naruto looked down on himself, but his father was sure to nip that in the bud. Don't look down on yourself Naruto. Kanoha wasn't built in a day. Let's try it again. Minato watched as his son was quick to agree with him and prepared to perform the jutsu again. He has your determination, that much is clear. He thought to himself and his habanero. They practiced for a few hours, but it was largely fruitless. Minato was beginning to feel the air get excited by his son's technique, but nothing concrete had manifested itself yet. Naruto was disappointed, but Minato reminded him how long it took for him to create the Rasengan, as a reminder of the length of time it could take for Jutsus. Naruto only sighed and challenged Niji to a spar when he returned from his trip to the Hyuga clan to see those who were worried about him and cared for him, which Niji did the same to an extent. He had been refused, which led to an awkward dinner, but there was no build-up off the incident, and a few hours later, they all went to their respective sleeping quarters. While his son and godson slept, Minato stayed up to attack his new personal goal. He quickly sat himself in lotus position and brought his hands together. A bit tacky, but effective for what he was trying to perform. He had begun meditating in preparation of going to Mount Mayaboku and formally undertaking the sage training again. He had tried years before, but never had quite managed to complete the necessary balancing needed. He knew it was a matter of when he had time between his team and his sons, but he needed to complete this training as soon as possible. Quieting his thoughts, he let his body relax as attempted to meditate. A few minutes in, he felt his body getting pulled into a new space. Was this the nirvana the monks attempted to meditate for? Somehow, he doubted it, both logistically and factually. Opening his eyes, he found himself in a giant cube, made up of bricks that had chakra chains embedded visually upon them. In the middle of this giant cube were giant bars that stretched beyond the light, the light that had no source. This world confused Minato until he saw out of the corner of his eye a flash of the creature behind the cage bars. 
he realized he was within the confines of his soul, protected by the dying act of his love with the beast that helped kill her. I will be, I know you are behind those bars. Let us speak. He demanded, walking towards the cell and finally noticing the seal that confirmed his thoughts. Without a sound, the Kaiubi walked out of the shadows, shocking Minato. Why was he so small? He stood a mere two and a half stories high and stretched for nearly 30 meters. It was big, but this was barely a foot of the beast he knew. Was it controlling his size for some reason? By abductor. It seems we get to finally meet. It spoke in a rough voice, completely bitter. Yes, we do. I hadn't planned on meeting with you, but I see how this could be advantageous. So, how have you been within this seal? He questioned the Buu. I have lived with the pain of that day for over 11 years, human. I was ripped in half by your seal and my body gouged by Shinigami in an attempt to claim what your mate stole from him. I have been in hell. He spat at the hokage. So that explains why you are so much smaller. Shinigami took your essence and shrunk you to this size. At this deduction by the Yandame, the Buu laughed. It saw his jailer's confusion and decided to explain. My essence. Do not make my laugh, human. I am this size because it brings me the least pain. If you wish to see the true me, I will grant you the honor of being haunted by those images. He spoke before suddenly morphing. Minato wanted to ask a different question, but could only look on in horror as the beast expanded to his regular size, Minato choking down the vomit that tried to escape his being. He had no idea that this was even a possibility. The left side of the Kaiubi's face was normal, but as you moved past the nose, you began to see the fur stripped away and, at the point parallel to his earline, the skin as well. Beneath his upper lip, the beast had no fur or skin to speaking, merely tendons that demonstrated how the monster's mouth worked. His arms and legs were disaster zones as well, as there was molted flesh, visible tendons and, with his left front paw and entire right rear leg, merely bone to support this goliath. His chest was hit worst of all, as it was tatters of flesh hanging onto his exposed ribs. His organs were visible, and a disaster zone to boot. His left lung was rotten, and with half of his stomach and his intestines were gone, the acid from its existing half dripping onto the concrete with an echoing hiss. His tails were not as bad a sight as three of them were whole, but two malted, while three were stripped in areas of skin, while the final one was in tatters, as whole portions had been stripped away from the beast. When I say gouge, I mean he stuck his hand through your mate's barrier and ripped away as much of me as he could. Minato was disturbed at watching how the muscles moved as the Kaiubi spoke. He ripped and he clawed, and I suffered. I suffered because of you. But at least you did not go unscathed. Minato began to freak out when the Kaiubi said that. He vaguely remembered the conversation he had when he woke up about how part of his soul being ripped away from him. This must have been the parts ripped from the Kaiubi. He looked down onto his body to see what he had lost. He nearly had a heart attack when nothing below his left shin was there. His leg randomly stopped midway through the shin. He had no idea how he was keeping balance. He looked over his body, noticing with a fright that his entire right hand and wrist were lacking skin and tendons, just a flab of muscle. He ran his good hand over his face, hoping for no deformities. The odd sensation over his left ear gave him pause, and a second touch confirmed he was touching his brains. Stop this. Minato spoke in a frantic voice, closing his eyes. He had never imagined this, he truly was sorry for what had happened to the Kaiubi, who now lived in a fate worse than death. He had begun to feel less than human, getting to see what his soul looked like now. Go back to normal, you said it was less painful, right? Indeed it is. The Kaiubi confirmed. Minato opened his eyes, and the world was back in the pleasant fantasy of a tiny Kaiubi and a fully skulled Minato. Now, human, you could pay for your sin and release me from this cage. Minato was tempted to do so for half a second, but shook his head. I apologize for your suffering, but I refuse to release you. At best you will leave Kanoha alone only to be recaptured by another village, and at worst you finish the job you began 11 years ago. I refuse to release you. The Kaiubi couldn't help but be slightly impressed. He had never thought to think about getting resealed by another hidden village. But he still couldn't let the human get away with refusing him. I may not be the being I once was, but I will still find a way to escape and punish you for your insolence, abductor. Now leave my presence. Bonato paused for a moment, pondering how he would actually leave this construct when he found himself in his room again. With a sigh of relief, he decided to stop his meditations for the night. He knew he wouldn't be able to sleep after what he had seen, so he decided to undertake an action that would distract him. He would create another brand new jutsu. Elsewhere, a blonde-haired man grinned as he let his batch of disposable chunin out of a wagaker. Sure, they knew diplomacy, but he didn't see much of the point. No, what he was interested in was giving their destination a show they would never forget. He was an artist of the highest caliber and set the stage for his explosive art in such a volatile venue. Sure, the old man didn't like his art, but he hoped to get some new converts to his view of the world in good Al Kanoha. 
I don't trust a wagaker in the least. Danzo made his feelings abundantly clear to the Sandame Hokage. Our interactions in the last decade have been minimal, but the second the news of Minato being alive is leaked, they announced they are sending a diplomatic congregation to ease relation. I truly hope Hiruzen that you see this for the scam it is. As one eye pierced the Hokage, trying to embed his ideology into him. Beside him, the elder Kaharu shook her head in agreement. He's right, Hiruzen. The chances that the Tsuchikage would send men here for this purpose are minimal. From the outline of reports we have heard from Iwa, the diplomats being sent are of only average importance. And the leader of the expedition is a jonin that we cannot trust. Anzo agreed with her. Indeed. This jonin, from all reports, is among their strongest shinobi. From our rough calculations, he could equal or perhaps best Sherigan Kakashi in battle, and, more importantly, could defeat the former Yandame before he can fully regain his strength. He is a trusted student of the Tsuchikage and could easily be an assassin for them. The third voice of Hiruzen's reason, Hamura, interjected finally. While your claims are hypothetically true, they can easily be explained away from a logical perspective. The use of low-ranking diplomats make them acceptable casualties if we were to attack them, while also limiting their ability to make grand promises on behalf of Iowa. If we had decided to attempt to end this feud, can you say we would not do the same thing Kaharu, Danzo? And, Hokage, the choice of this shinobi, a mighty shinobi, as logical as a sufficient deterrent from attacking the diplomats and as a show of Iowa's might, so that we may negotiate in good faith. This is the same tactic Kumo used seven years ago, Hamura. I do not wish to be made a fool of again. Danzo countered strongly. Danzo returned his attention to the Hokage. Agreeing to accept these individuals was a mistake, Hiruzen. You risk not only the Yandame, but also the Kaiubi Jinchiriki. That is unacceptable. Unacceptable as it may be to you, Danzo, I am thinking of the long-term future of my village. And if we can erase a foe from our past and have an ally in our future, I would rather have egg on my face than knowing I failed to do anything at all. And even if you were to sway me, they arrive tomorrow morning, in 14 hours. It would be impossible to feasibly stop them without creating further crisis. The Hokage expertly talked down the situation's tension and gave a basic analysis. He turned his attention towards Danzo specifically. And I have learned the lessons of Kumo. Extra care is being taken, not only for Minato and Naruto, but for the Hyugas, the Ichihas, and other important clans. What sort of care? Kaharu asked the Hokage, as she and Hamura were unaware of any said provisions being made. Naruto, this room is tiny. Are you sure it is even a room? Sasuke Chiha questioned Naruto about the fourth bedroom in the Namika's house, a mere 3 by 3 meters in size. His bag that was on the floor seemed to swallow a large chunk of the floor space. Naruto shrugged. Well, it was meant to be a guest room. And it isn't like guests need a full room to put their stuff. Sasuke looked around the room with a full-size bed and nightstand, along with a sparsely filled bookcase and short narrow dresser. Those few things took up a large chunk of the room. I usually begin my days with stretching if I am not in a hurry. There is no room for this in here. Naruto shook his head. You are only staying here two nights cause the Hokage asked. You can go that long without stretching. Sasuke rolled his eyes but knew Naruto was correct. Two days of not stretching would cause no long-lasting damage to his goals. I only agreed because it seemed like a unique opportunity to learn from one of the best shinobi alive. Frankly, this is more likely to put myself into harm than staying alone in the compound. If I understand correctly, it is Iwa we are worried about. And Iwa is more interested in you and your father than the Ichiha. Naruto just gave him a look for a moment. Yeah, well, if they try anything, dad and I will just kick their asses. He informed him in a tone that made it seem like the most obvious thing in the world. Sasuke knew the stupidity in that response, that Naruto had yet to become a genin and thought he could defeat legitimate shinobi, shinobi that a hokage entrusted to defeat a man who defeated the Kaiubi. However, he was a guest in his house and he would leave his delusions intact. So instead, he left the room and made his way downstairs. Naruto followed him down. So, Sasuke, since you're the guest and I can't cook, how about we go out to eat? I leave and pay. Naruto tried to tempt Sasuke, but he knew that when Naruto meant out to eat, he meant Raymond. And Sasuke, even if he was hungry, was not in the mood for Raymond. I will pass on that offer, Naruto. I'm not really hungry and, to tell you the truth, I'd rather be training. I'll be outside. With that, Sasuke left the house and Naruto to make a decision. He decided beef instant Raymond. About five minutes later, Naruto carried two instant Raymond cups stacked on one another out of the house and looked for Sasuke. He caught him sitting on the ground, facing the side of the house. Sasuke looked at him and gave him a look that Naruto read as, how is that genius idea of Raymond eating possible? It really said, what, well, you see, the bottom cup is the first Raymond cup I made. While I was waiting for the second cup to finish, I drank some of the broth and ate some of the noodles of the first. That way, I could put the second cup into the first cup without splashing any broth or noodles out. 
then, I eat the entire second cup of ramen and remove the cup and put the first cup into so I can eat the rest. The best part is, the first cup has the warmth trapped in by the second cup, so that, when I get to it, it is still warm instead of going all cold and icky. Sasuke did not care one bit about that explanation, though he was surprised Naruto had stumbled his way into making a freshness seal with Raymond cups. Naruto moved on from having Raymond on the brain, it was still going into his mouth and became focused on Sasuke. So, what made you sit on the ground instead of training? He asked him. Sasuke pointed to the wall. I'm trying to figure out how you do that wall walk stunt. I can get it has to do with sending chakra to stick yourself to the wall, but I can't get it done. I was hoping the Yandame could show me that much. Well, apparently they are still doing a mission or something. I wish I could be doing cool missions and stuff. Naruto complained. And heck, I could show you that. It just takes knowing how much chakra you need to stick and then making sure you can stick with one foot while you take the step to the next. Naruto moved about 10 meters from the wall, Raymond cup still in hand. Sasuke looked back at him, about to receive an explanation on what he was doing. It also helps if you get a running start for momentum. With that, Naruto took off to the wall. With ease he began running up it, getting two-thirds of the way up before slowing to a stop on the wall. See, it is pretty easy. However, Naruto didn't realize that Raymond obeys the laws of physics, and when a cup is turned sideways the contents begin to spill out. He quickly realized such when he saw the broth falling. Nuo. He yelled out, jumping to follow the Raymond. Sasuke looked on in horror as Naruto tried to catch the fallen Raymond back into the cup, only causing more Raymond to fall out. Horror as he realizes this was his rival, this was the son of the great hero of Konoha. This was the guy who wanted to be Hokage. Naruto landed, the entirety of the second cup's content spilled onto the ground near the wall. Sasuke was happy he was away from the splatter zone, looking on as Naruto was mourning the loss of the noodles. He was mourning the loss of the noodles. Mourning them. The noodles. He was mourning the freaking noodles. Sasuke looked away, knowing he was getting trapped in an endless loop of shock of the, for the lack of a better word, insanity he was witnessing. He turned to see both Minato and Niji walking up the pathway to the house. They were also looking at Naruto. Naruto, stop doing that and head inside. Minato commanded his son. He was frankly embarrassed that Niji and Sasuke had seen that. What was worse was that he wasn't even the first Yuzumaki that this had happened to. Sasuke decided that now was not the time to learn about wall walking and followed Naruto's lead about going inside. He passed him as he slowly marched to the door. He couldn't help but call him this utterly perfect phrase. Dope. With that, the four men went inside as the ignored twilight came. Minato especially was anxious because Iwa was arriving in the morning. Despite the warnings of Iwa's arrival in the early morning, Rock Lee knew he had to be training. If he would ever defeat Niji, he had to train twice as long and twice as hard as him and become twice the shinobi he was. It would not be an easy battle, but he was assured he could do it. He was doing his technically legal laps around Kanoha, which was a massive hidden village that took some time to complete. His ability, as a fresh genin, to leave the village gates for training was questionable, but the gate guards were friendly towards him and supported his goals. He was nearly finishing the second lap, the early morning sun high enough to cause sufficient sunlight, but still too early for the day to begin, when he felt a presence in the air. Multiple presences. Rock Lee pushed himself harder to get to the front gates, uncomfortable by this presence that was not exactly welcoming. He had remembered Iwa was supposed to be coming, but thought he could make friends with them easily. But if this was indeed their aura, he was not sure such would be the case. He kept running, with the gates of Kanoha coming into view. At this time, a shinobi burst out of hiding from the brush and began running at the same pace as Lee. He slowed down significantly, in shock, and this shinobi followed his head. He was younger, with long blonde hair and a ponytail and an Iwa headband. Lee could feel some of the aura coming from him, but he looked friendly enough. Isn't it a bit early for green genin such as yourself to be out? His voice was pleasant enough, but Lee understood he was dangerous. He was naive, not ignorant. Not at all, I was shinobi. I am just doing my morning exercises before a full day of training. I don't wish to stay a genin for long. Lee told him plainly. He received a small smile. I like your style, kid. I bet with a little time, you could be a masterpiece. Wish the brats I was lugging around had half your style. He turned to the forests. Brat. Lady brat. Old brat. Get your butts in motion, Kanoha is right here. Lee heard a few people in the distance and looked towards the sound. The blonde shinobi caught his attention with a nod. Before I let you finish your running, I want to ask a question. How is that old Minato fellow doing? Lee gave him a suspicious look. What do you want with sensei? Lee knew he revealed too much as he said it. The blonde looked pleased. Oh, so he is teaching, and you are his little genin. That's hilarious. They got him taking students again. I thought a hookage big shot was above that. He chuckled a tiny bit before getting a serious look on his face. 
Tell you what, kid, tell your sensei that, once I am done doing my thing with the brats and their duties, I would love to meet him. Tell him that Dadara would love to meet him. Dadara was bored out of his fucking mind. He had thought that it was going to be a bit more interesting than this. He thought he would get to meet the old fart, the Sandame Hokage. Instead he met two old farts named Kaharu, and he didn't bother to remember the other's name. He thought that the location would be in the famous Hokage Tower, but they said that this building near the edge of the city was sufficient for these negotiations. He thought he would be able to intimidate the dipshits Kanoha used to negotiate with. He was kindly asked to remain on the perimeter. The brats did try to protest, but he decided to listen. They were just going to be talking boring shit and if they tried with anything to them, then he could get to have some real fun. He was also helping some Kanoha brat with a war grudge, tried to start something with him so he could put them in their place. His goal when he came to Kanoha was to show them some art, but instead he was bored, sitting near the door's gateway with his high tate over his eyes taking a nap. He could sense everything around him, but none of it was interesting. Except for the one person casually walking up to him. He seemed strong. Fairly strong. Dadara let himself smile a bit, hoping this meant his art show was about to start. But instead of coming at him with the intent to kill, the person plopped himself down on the opposite side of the door, sitting. A few nearby people were gasping, though. He might as well find out who this was and if they wanted to start something. You looking to fight me or what? He asked a newcomer, lifting his hand to his high tate so he could see the person. An older confident male voice. Not especially. I was simply told you wanted to meet with me by my student. So, Dadara san, here I am. Dadara quickly slid his high tate to his forehead before looking over to see the person he had most wanted to meet. So, the eyebrow genin told you I wanted to talk. A, hey, Minato Namikas. He let out a nasally grunt at the end of his statement. Winata looked at him. Yes, he did. And I was actually interested in talking with you too, Dadara san. I heard from the report that you are a student of all the Noki. Is that true? Dadara nodded. Yeah, he taught me when he wasn't too busy with the idiots in my village. He is definitely a fool nowadays, though. He can't see the art that I make is fantastic. He grunted at the end of his statement. Winata looked interested. So, you are an artist. What sort? I know that the Sandame has a passion for watercolors, and I know a few other shinobi who love to sculpt. Adara couldn't help but chuckle. Watercolors. Sculpting. That is art for amateurs. That is art for those who don't know what art truly is. This is art. He rummaged out of his pocket a small sculpture of a kunai that was made of a white clay. Winato was a touch confused. Um, isn't the just a sculpt his words were cut off as Dadara tossed it into the air, and, after a few seconds, it exploded in a blast that was not harmful to either shinobi, but impressive for the little kunai. Dadara looked proud. That was far from my best work, but, Yandame, this is what true art is. He beamed as the remnants of the explosion settled. Winato was surprised, but not fully off guard. If I am not mistaken, that was an explosive putty. And I'm guessing you somehow used chakra to set it off. That was definitely an interesting combination and dangerous for him to be in any village with that. His sense were on high alert now. You are as smart as the rumors say, aren't you? Yes it is. It still hasn't reached its full potential, however. The old man hasn't let me use my final tool in order for my art to become true masterpieces. Dadara lamented with a grunt to punctuate. Bonato was glad that the Tsuchikage had the sense to not allow this explosion's lover to have free access to what he wanted on the subject. Dadara didn't seem like a bad person, but he could do things in a bad way if you were in his way. You seem to really like explosions. Minato began to probe. If I recall from the war, doesn't Iwa have an explosions unit or something along those lines? His smirk grew. I'm the captain, of course. Dadara boasted. He had thought this was the case. He had heard rumors during the war about how a group of Iwa shinobi could make things explode on their command. Explosive putty was an easy but powerful target for this ability. However, the putty was difficult to create and was unstable during this process. But, with that casual test, it seemed this shinobi was not in short supply of the substance. I am not surprised, coming from an elite jounin such as yourself. It seems odd that they sent such a powerful man like yourself to chaperone a few diplomats. Did the Tsuchikage have any other missions he asked you to do? Minato casually asked, hoping to catch him off guard. Age Kano has power, determine the validity of the rumors of your survival, see the current situation about you as an enemy the basics that anyone could do. Dadara was not caught off guard, but plainly honest. So he sent his top shinobi to do all that. Those were relatively basic things. A decent jounin would have sufficed for such a task. Dadara laughed. What? No way, he wanted to send an expendable brat to do that. I had to pretty much beg in order to get this job. Beg for it. Minato was worried. Why were you so eager for this mission? Dadara grinned fully at Minato. Simple. You're like a bujiman in Iowa. 
My parents used to warn me to train hard or else the yellow flash would come and kill you. People were real worried when the rumors came around that you were alive, but I wasn't paying much attention when you fought us in the war. But now, since you are here and I am here, I just want one thing. To fight you. Winato knew it. He just knew it. Of course this kid wanted to fight him. He didn't believe in the stories that he had when he was young, so he wanted to see it for himself. Well, I can see you are eager, but I don't think that will work. I doubt Anoki or Suratobi would really want their shinobis to start fighting out of nowhere. Might start a war before they are prepared to fight one. Winato understood politics pretty well and knew that Anoki would want to be ready to take on all of Konoha before he started something. Especially after how the last war ended with that invasion of 1000 shinobi taken out by him alone. You think I really care what some old men think? I want to fight you, Yellow Flash. Whether it be here or somewhere else doesn't matter to me, but what matters is that it happens right now. Dadara jumped up to his feet, looking down upon Minato's sitting form. Bring it on. Minato knew he was being watched by a few Anbu who the Sandain had prepared to spy on Dadara. They were probably thinking to themselves about how they could stop it, but he knew that was a risk. He wasn't sure how to stop that putty, and Dadara seemed like he didn't think much about things like collateral damage or non-aggression packs. There was only going to be one way to end this without it blowing up in everyone's face, Minato quickly realized. He had to play Dadara's game. A kilometer east of here is a training ground. He pointed the direction of where it was. We are going to fight there in five minutes. Don't wander on your way there. He told him as he stood up. Ignore any of the men in masks who might try and talk you out of it. They won't touch you unless you make a move against them. He wanted to ensure none of those Anbu got hurt either. I'll see you in a flash. With that goodbye, Minato vanished thanks to his signature jutsu. Dadara was impressed seeing the jutsu in action. This is gonna be fun. Dadara told himself as he stretched his legs. He gave him a grin. I wonder, will this be my masterpiece? With that, he took off for the training ground, leaving a few Anbu to follow and one to give word to the Hokage about what was going to happen. The Hokage was attempting to work through the details of a complicated C turned S turned D rank mission when the Anbu jumped in. He knew that something was going on, this Anbu was supposed to be monitoring the Iwa Jounin. What is going on, elephant? He commanded the Anbu to speak. Winato Namak has made contact with the Iwa Jounin and had a conversation with him. It seemed to be going well, with the target confirming this was a scouting expedition and was not sent to attack Konoha. However, on his own volition he challenged Minato to a fight that was accepted. They are to be fighting a training ground 26 in 3 minutes. Elephant explained to the Hokage, the Sandane groaned. Get Kakashi and Guy to the scene to act as support for the Anbu. Tell them they are to interfere if the Iwa Shinobi attempts to kill Minato or attempts to take the action outside of the confines of the training ground. Aim to capture him alive if this is the case. I don't want to start a war over this. Now, leave Elephant. Elephant quickly left to find the duo. By himself, the Hokage muttered. Damn it, Minato. You better be doing this since it is the smart move this time. Minato had flashed to his home, which he quickly entered. He made sure to grab his shuriken, his high tate, and to change his pants into a more flexible pair. If his plan was not immediately successful, this was going to be a debacle. He quickly left his house, passing Niji on the way. Godfather, what are you doing? Is there a mission? He asked, preparing himself. He was growing bored of C-rank missions. Winato shook his head. No, this is just a spar I was challenged to. Just stay here for now, Niji. We can talk afterwards. With that command, Minato took a few steps before flashing away. Niji was curious about what was going on, but was even more curious about how his godfather used the Flying Thunder God technique in the first place. Before the five minutes were up, both Dadara and Minato found themselves facing off a training ground 26. Dadara noticed the presences Minato expected to be there and frowned. Yellow Flash, I assume this battle will be one on one. He grunted to express his annoyance. Minato looked around, lingering on Kakashi for a few seconds before returning his focus to Dadara. It will be, unless one of us tries something stupid in this spar. A spar? Dadara asked, not liking the word. This is just a spar. Minato nodded. Well, I don't want to have to explain to Anoki why I killed you if this was a fight to the death. Don't think you will beat me that easily, Flash. With a grunt, Dadara sprinted full force towards Minato. That was an unexpected tactic by the Iwa Shinobi in his mind, so he prepared himself. But knowing something was wrong, he decided to use the upper advantage he had set up before this battle started. Without Dadara realizing it, he slipped a three-pronged kunai into a pouch of his when he exploded the kunai. Seeing that in action made Minato know he needed to prepare for an assault by the Iwa Shinobi. He sensed for the kunai and realized it was not in front of him. It was underneath him. Minato jumped far away from the thing coming at him, the thing he knew was not Dadara. 
Just as it reached his destination, it revealed itself to be made of explosive putty and blew up violently. Lenato noticed in those last seconds a hand coming out from where he was standing moments before. Two seconds later, he felt the kunai's presence in the midst of the explosion. A flash later, the spar was done. The Anbu and others watching looked uninterested as the smoke from the blast cleared. There stood Minato and Dadara, the first standing behind the other. Minato held a three-pronged kunai to his neck, pushing it inwards on the verge of making Dadara bleed. With a smile on his face, Minato spoke. I believe I win. He told the obviously frustrated Dadara. Those looking on were shocked by the quickness of this interaction. Was Minato really that much stronger? Dadara looked back at Minato. So, what was it? Did you realize it was an explosive clone, or my presence underneath? Lenato casually reached into the kunai pocket, leaving Dadara wondering what was going on. He pulled out his planted kunai and showed it to Dadara with his non-dangerous hand. I realized your clone didn't have this. Once I felt the presence above ground, it was over for you. Dadara let his smirk grow. So, you planted one of them kunais on me? When was it? It was when I showed you the explosion right? Only time my eyes weren't on you. That's right. Minato confirmed. I felt something was coming, so I figured you holding on to one of those would be a good idea if the time came. Adara shifted his attention back to Minato. You know, since you moved that, you won't have a way of tracking me. And I wouldn't be a jown in if I got scared every time someone put a weapon to my throat. Minato removed the kunai from Dadara's neck and placed both of them in his pockets. Maybe, but this is just a spar. A spar that I won. Adara was grinning in excitement. Best two out of three. I have to fight you again. Minato let out a chuckle. Sure in a few years. Get on my level before you challenge me. Now, if I recall, you are supposed to be keeping an eye on a few diplomats. Dadara grunted. A few years. How about the next time we meet? Lenato shrugged. We'll see. Just get back to your post. I'll be seeing you around then, Dadara. Dadara nodded to him. All right then, Minato. I can't wait to fight you again. With that, Dadara left, itching to challenge Minato at the next opportunity. He had proved to him why he was worthy of being a cage in the first place. Minato walked over to where Kakashi and Guy were standing, after Dadara had left the grounds. So, did the sand dame send you to watch over me? He asked. Yosh. That was a most youthful and clever trick you pulled on the Iwa Shinobi, Yandame Sama. Guy gushed to him. Kakashi just nodded, but he realized something was off. Is there anything troubling you, Sensei? He bluntly asked. Minato took a few deep breaths, not wanting to admit this, but he had no choice. I got lucky. If I ran into Dadara without prior meeting, he'd kill me 100 out of 100 times. I thought I was further along than this, but I need your help. Akashi was surprised to see Minato humbling himself to him after his prior words. Guy was stoked. Yosh. That sounds like an excellent situation. I would love to come over anytime to work on your conditioning and tojutsu. Heck, if you are up for it, I would even teach you how to maximize your abilities. Kakashi knew he was meaning opening the eight gates. Minato had a clue as well, he did know Guy's father well. It'd be an honor to train with you again, Sensei. I'm willing to help as much as needed. Kakashi told him, hoping this would further gain him and his better grace. Minato looked to the duo and smiled. Thanks. And Guy, I have been meaning to talk with you. Could you also help one of my students? He seems to be someone who'd you see eye to eye with well. He would, as you say, having the power of youth. Kakashi was honestly worried about the fire in Guy's eyes. That seemed plain old dangerous. 